I'll do it. All right, here just we go. One. Yeah, it's got just one. <laughs> that would be confusing. <laughs> I'd have to pick one. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Cool, Leo. Uh, I think I jumped right. the Thank gun you, a Liam. Little. You Liam have... got the Sesame Street reference. What was the Sesame Street reference? I wonder what if. Let's try. That's their new thing. That's their I new. I wonder what uh, if. Let's try. It's their new. Their new thing. You know. Huh. It's like. I wonder what if. Let's try. That's their new saying and stuff. All right. All right. Well. Are we still getting echo? No. Okay. No, you're not getting echo anymore. Uh, that person might be watching behind. I'm listening to the stream. Uh, getting echo? Check, 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 check. Nope, sounds good. We are good. All right, yo. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Here Everybody's we go. rolling. Are we ready I'm to do rolling, this yes. thing? Ready. I <laughs> think we should go. All right. I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, it's because we have like no notes this week because it's only yeah. been a couple yeah. days. Yeah, it's because I didn't do I didn't do the the dorp. The dorp. But we got stuff for the dorp. We'll, we'll we be go. good. We got plenty. I don't feel like I'm falling off the, the thing. And y'all can't see my mess anymore. My gigantic mess of my office. Yeah. See, we got to get you one of those cameras so we can see your mess. <laughs> yeah. Wide shot. See my, my disgusting <laughs> office. It's like everything in camera view is perfect. Pull it. Yeah. Right? You can pull it right out. <laughs> All right, we got people in here. I think we're ready to do a show. Everybody's rolling. I got my notes, and uh, mm -hmm. if anything happens uh, with the waveform or whatever, uh, give give it a good uh, hey real quick, like loud. Hey, hip hop, hip hip hop, not hip, you, hip, Matt. Hip, hip, hip. Um, actually, Paul. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm I am a little I'm a little loud. Should I bring it down? No, you're fine. You're fine. All right, Just keep it. Well, up. hey, hey. Give it a good Paul. Give it a good hey, like loud. Hey. Okay. Hey. Cool. I was making sure you're not overmodulating. Hey. All right. Let's do a show. You ready? There we go. Yes. All right. What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us from the Go Gorilla Film Cast, the award winning <laughs> Sashia Dumont and Paul Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> and MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show, questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, show topic ideas, artist suggestions. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok now. Check it out. And MoGraph.com. make it stop. DJ, ticks throw my talks. speakers up. <laughs> yes. Kids with the ticks and the talks. The ticks and the talks. Um, <clears> so <throat> we don't have too much as far as notes we have no concerned notes. today because Today's it's going to be a short show. Days. It's going to be a short show. Today yeah. is a free-for-all. Absolutely. It's free for everyone. Yeah. So That's right. uh, Paul and Sashia have been here, I believe, since the beginning. The very beginning. Almost mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. very beginning. And yep. uh, so it's it's uh, pretty interesting. We've been uh, you know, we've been friends and been chatting and whatnot online for years at this point. Yeah. And then uh, you started your show, and uh, you're on our podcast network as well. So we've been mm -hmm. pushing that. So everybody hears your promo every week if they listen to the <laughs> audio version of the podcast on iTunes. And um, so. Uh, this is going to be a fun show. It's going to be a little different. We're going to talk about some uh, film stuff, and we're also going to talk about your journey into motion graphics and all of that. Uh, a couple week wrap-up things that we have to do before we re really get going here, though. I uh, saw the new studio <laughs> camera. Yeah. Oh, this is a part I fast-forward <laughs> through. Like, <laughs> but uh, we'll if you're a camper, we got some good stuff for you here. At the, you know, the we got to wrap give you the, stuff is good. We got to give you the updates for camp, you know, so you're ready to yeah. go. I don't send know. Send out an email. If, They'll read it. The it's thing fine. is, if sure no, they will. no one will read it. They only get their info from the show. Oh, shoot. I was supposed to send out an email yesterday. <laughs> what were you Dang supposed it. to send out? The shuttle? The shuttle schedule. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so the All shuttle right. schedule will be coming. Note to self. Shuttle schedule is coming. If, yeah. if, if you, the thing is, if you're listening to this on Friday with us live, you know, cool, awesome. This is the thing. The shuttle schedule is coming, you know, but like... If you're listening to it Monday, yeah, this audio then, will be posted on Monday. Like, so, like, so you're one, gonna be listening to this if, on if the way to camp. 
like exactly you in the, probably on the plane. will because monday is a a holiday right you know so it's like oh yeah you didn't get the schedule schedule you probably already got the schedule or yeah. or you just haven't read your email yeah people are anyway. literally on or on the way back from camp listening I'm, to this you yeah know, two weeks. <laughs> like, i don't think i don't think there's there's you know we tried to put the shuttle the times as close to people getting in we tried to give like a tough, anywhere y'all. from like uh 15 30 45 minutes maybe an hour like you know space in between them landing and the shuttle picking right, them up right. so if you're there I'll, if you're I'll post land, that like, and i'll send it out today if you land and you're able to get your stuff and get out and you see a camp shuttle and there's room for you before yeah. yours i mean obviously you know we got to know that we're not waiting for you on the next shuttle uh, yeah. But I, for the most part, it's going to be the same person driving the shuttle um, on the yeah, way and, in. Yeah, and you know, so we'll have we'll have we'll have a list. We'll have the same shuttle list for people. You know, gosh, I can't believe this is next week. We've been like, doing this time so next week. Crap. We're going to be doing workshops. Let's see, it's twelve, so it's nine. Yeah, our first workshop will will be happening. We'll have fifteen minutes left of the coffee people. Yeah, so. there's um. There's no show, just uh, to let you know, there is no show the following Monday, uh, but yes. there will be an Evergreen. I think I'm probably going to put in the Peter Costi drop episode because that was just a special on its own, and that was a really good cool. convo. And uh, so that'll be in there. So if you're into NFTs, you can check that out. It was a great conversation. Um, so uh, there's that. Uh, I, everything's working out as far as, far as NAB. I uh, wasn't going to fly to NAB just in case we had a baby. And, and apparently the second day of NAB is when we're going to induce. And that's yep. also the, the the Monday we weren't going to have a show. So that works out yeah. really well. That works out, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so congratulations. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I think Matt's, yeah. Matt's ready to oh, sorry, tackle NAB on. by himself. You know? Yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah. I, I mean, the you thing is, me down. and Nick know what we're doing for the most part. If we need to call you, we'll just call you in the middle of you having a baby, so right? So we didn't talk <laughs> about this on the show. We should talk about this. This is funny. So we were at Maxon yeah. in the warehouse, and we yes. got everything set up. And what we did mm-hmm. on the uh, when we were done, we had kind of a day that was like the pack-up day, make sure everything's mm-hmm. good, all of that. So uh, we, we did a Kobayashi Maru. Mm-hmm. And um, so for those who don't understand the Star uh, Trek reference, here, yeah, you give, you know, me, yeah, it's uh, it's basically a uh, a guaranteed failure. You know, the, it basically the whole thing is so that you have to admit defeat or something right. like that or you have to give up. It was a thing that Kirk took 800 times and then he eventually cheated and right. beat the Kobayashi Maru. Right. Anyway. So it's it's a test. Anyway, it's Star Trek reference. So what we did was I would have Matt and Nick leave the room, and then I would go mess with something. And this is a whole – we're talking like it's a setup like what I have here, but there's a rack, mm-hmm. and there's other gear, and there's cables and internet and all that. And I would do little stupid things. Like I would take the Wi-Fi cable uh, – or, yeah, the Wi-Fi router cable, and I would pull it out just a little bit. Like so yeah. that it would stop working, or I would go. And then in, we'd have to figure out what the issue was. Yeah, you they'd know? have to come I, back. I would like to say we did a pretty good job. They did. We did a pretty yeah. good job. Yeah, it's like a boot camp. Yeah. <laughs> right. And we'd run through it. We'd pretend we were doing like a presenter coming up, and and Rick would be the um, would be Matthias essentially, and be like, Yeah. All right, our next presenter coming up, and then we would run through all of that, and then I would come up, pretend I was a presenter. I'd pre- pretend I was Phil. Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah. hello, we're going to do Cinema 4D today. That's for true. And then yeah. we test it. It was fun. It was fun, like, breaking things. Anyway. I, I picture it to be, like, <laughs> Hell's Kitchen when he, like, messes yeah. with people and puts, like, oh, mashed yeah, potatoes yeah. that aren't real. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's funny. Puree. It's the Wi-Fi router, you idiot. Yeah, Get I'd start, box. like, yelling at them, like, yeah. really loud, <laughs> getting really pissed. <laughs> we got to go live. Anyway. We got to go live. We're five minutes late, people. So the uh, other camp stuff. So check this out. Check this out. We let's see. We got last minute notes, swag. I've talked about all this. Um, okay, I don't want to talk about the sponsor thing yet, Matt. The, okay. the thing. The thing. You know the okay. thing. The thing. The thing. <laughs> um, so stickers. I did want to mention stickers before we get to that. The camp mm-hmm. song. First of all, uh, hopefully, will be up on Spotify by the time (laughs) camp starts so if you want to play it or learn the words uh or if you want to use it on instagram stories hopefully it'll be available by then 
The other That's thing really is that the stickers, there's Camp MoGraph stickers. Uh, the, a lot of them are automatically in the search for Instagram and TikTok right now. But um, there'll be a link where you can get all the stickers. So you can get like flying to camp stickers or beer stickers or countdown to camp stickers. Like seven days to camp, six days to camp, five days to camp. Right now, uh, that sticker is in there uh, for the countdown and I used it today. I will be doing a... Um, a TikTok that shows you how to use the stickers on the Camp MoGraph TikTok. So make sure you All check right. out the Camp MoGraph TikTok. We're going to do some stuff on there. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a dance or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, try and be hip like the kids. Is the Camp MoGraph TikTok already ha – do we do we have one? It exists. Already? There's just nothing on it yet. It's uh -huh. the, the, the name is secured. Uh, That's good. So, all right. Camp MoGraph. Now, before we get to, Follow. to gear, I want to go to sponsors. And let's talk right. about the new sponsor. So yeah, um, Camp MoGraph. I mean, I, 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 there's, I don't know what else to say about it. Like we've been talking about. I'm, I'm so excited, man. This is two years of, yeah. two years of work, you know, and it's like we're gonna get this done. We're gonna have a great time, and then we're gonna just ramp up into the next one. But this one could not have been done without all of our amazing sponsors, and you know. We had to cancel last year because of COVID and stuff like that, and uh, they all stuck with us. So they've been with us for two years. They, they bought sponsorship for one, and they got two years' worth. <laughs> so a uh, big shout-out to all of our sponsors. We're super excited to have them on board. Um, uh, everyone will be getting a T-shirt with all the sponsors on the back so you can remember if you ever forget, you know. So uh, uh, big shout-out to our sponsors, uh, our village sponsors, Maxon, O Toy and Video Copilot. Super excited to have them uh, sponsoring the villages, the three different villages. And then uh, our gold sponsors, Minimal Massive, Grayscale Gorilla, and De Facto Sound. And then our bronze sponsors, A Scripts and School of Motion. So a uh, big shout out to all of them. Um, and uh, we picked up another sponsor last night uh, who is yes, uh, sponsoring all of the alcohol for camp. Which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. So you know, aviation gin. <laughs> aviation gin. Well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so big shout out to uh, Beeple, who is sponsoring all of the alcohol at camp. So, uh, Mr. Super GQ. Happy. Mr. GQ, GQ man of the year. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I wonder if he gets ridiculous. any money for being GQ man of the year. Does he have you to know? like? Is it like when you're Miss America, where you have to do like? You know, certain you got to show up at certain events as part of the contract. I think so. Yeah. You, right. You know. And then if if he dies, does someone else take his the crown? Uh, GQ Man of the Year. The crown. <laughs> yeah. Take over his responsibilities. Yeah. I, I think that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you the oh, average? Are you? Uh, are you uh, Is it the runner up? The yeah. Job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna be runner up, Matt? Uh, no. For GQ Man of the Year? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, according to uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's true. That's true. I don't have the I don't have the work ethic that Mike has, you know, to be oh. GQ Artist of the Year. Plus, I'm not not a very good artist. Anyway, uh, so yeah, <laughs> super excited to have all of our sponsors and a uh, big shout out to Mike. You know, give him some love. Send him some love because that is freaking amazing. You know, that that's... yeah, <laughs> he hit me up and he's like, hey, what's the alcohol situation? I said, get friggin' lit, bro. <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, uh, can I sponsor it? I, I, I was like, oh, okay, all right. Sounds, you don't have to do that, but good we would to love me. that. Yeah. So yeah, um, uh, well, we're getting what? What are we getting to drink? We're getting some. Oh, I don't know the. I'm not the in things. charge of the alcohol. All, right. all I am in charge of is like serving. EJ had some like suggestions. That. Yes. And he passed them along to Julie, who's taking care of right. it. Everybody has we their, got some we, IPAs. We got people with serving licenses. It's it's mm -hmm. you it's you and Julie and Scott Scott Unruh. and Jeremy and Jeremy. EJ all got their licenses to serve alcohol. To serve in like Oregon. Thing. Yeah, to serve in <laughs> it's Oregon. It's like it doesn't transfer anywhere else. It's just yeah. Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> and we got And it's good for five years. We got uh so, so we've got some IPAs and some beers and things, but we also have some kegs of like truly or something like that. Because oh, really? there, yeah, there are going to be some. There's a lot of people that aren't beer drinkers, right? Yeah. A lot of people are also health conscious and like to get mm -hmm. that zero calorie, zero carb thing on with their truly, get their truly on. 
Um, but there's also now, because of Beeple, there's going to be some decent liquor involved. Yeah. Now, this yep. isn't just grab a bottle and drink it. Is this, Everybody right. has their licenses. <laughs> they got to do it the right way. You got to be served, you know. Um, you can't just pump the keg. You got to get a pitcher right. from a server and do it that way. So we got to can't be very loose with that. You know? you, we're talking about this. And no, I mean, there's like five people in the chat who are coming to camp. You know, it's all right in the chat. <laughs> oh, well, we're just we're just practicing for uh, for when we get to camp. Well, people will listen know? to this on the way, yeah, you know, know. Uh, yeah. and then you came over yesterday. Hopefully that brings up the right screen. There we go. It does. Yes. Uh, you came over. I've got this table full of of crap that i'm trying Dude, to you've get got your table ready. full and my whole table is full can you show that picture yes i absolutely have that picture i should have brought up your video as well but yesterday yeah. you sent me this photo and uh you've got all the swags yeah and, and things what you everywhere. don't see is so that are the staff t-shirts the camper t-shirts the new zip-up hoodies oh yeah look at that it's so nice Ooh. the new zip-up hoodies but what you don't see is that there's two more gigantic boxes of pullover hoodies behind me it's it's crazy it's so, so nice of you to give all of your guests free swag as well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um be so 35 dollars also <laughs> I, <laughs> I saved this part for the end because I figured we'd just get into, like, talking to y'all about film and stuff. Uh, I got some gear that's coming with us as well because we yep. want to get some pretty – I mean, it's going to be so gorgeous there. We want to get some pretty footage. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I'm assuming drones are allowed, but I'm bringing my drone. I know a lot of people are as well. Um, and then we are bringing two Blackmagic 6K cameras. We've got cages. We've got – microphones all the things so sometimes we're going to be doing stuff with our phones you know uh mm -hmm. just little things uh sometimes we're going to be shooting some promo footage and things for later you know 6k stuff like that we'll try and stay out of everybody's way and not be too intrusive or whatever but um you know we want to kind of capture the experience so we can show people what it's like for next time if they're deciding if they want to go or not we're going to be posting from social the best we can depending on our internet situation but um, again we're encouraging people to do a lot of stories and tag us in it so that you know we can regram them and whatever and we take and we save all of those stories so that we can use them for promo videos and stuff we have the, like 300 and something stories from the last camp that you can go through and see what people are doing it was awesome so um what i wanted to uh uh, bring up was this lens that I got. So I uh, was looking through some different options for lenses. You know, there's the classic Canon 400 millimeter lens, but it's expensive AF. It's like twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars, right? And 400 millimeter. And I was very apprehensive about going that direction, especially because I don't do a lot of still photography as much as I used to. And um, but I had rented one in Iceland, and I really loved it. And I'm like, I wish I had a lens like that for Oregon. So I found this, after talking to some uh, friends in the industry, this Sigma lens that works well for the Blackmagic and for the Canon camera. And it's a 100 to 600 millimeter lens. And wow. it was like 900 bucks, which is pretty good. And it has optical stabilization and all that. This is the biggest freaking lens you want to see? Hold on. Show us your lens. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that. Oh lord. <laughs> is a lens. Now. Oh, that's not I wonder, a lens. Can, that's a lens. I see you've played knifey <laughs> lensy before. Here, can I? I'll show it on the. Ah, oh, nice. Look! Look how big that thing is. It's I just arm. I just got to use the the camera, the new camera, as much as I can. So any excuse. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> The uh, this part comes out, and then you you undo this thing here, and you un unlatch it somewhere. I see. I'm still learning. And uh, look at this. It the freaking extension, like to go to 600. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. But it, about, I'm so uh, pumped to use this. Like connecting it to the, the 6K yeah. camera. Oh. What you had to do. So check this out. Hold on. <laughs> so heavy. So check this thing out. This is really cool. So it connects to the black magic. It works fine, but the automated controls don't work uh, unless you update the lens, which I haven't done yet. And I'm like, how do you firmware update a lens? Have you ever firmware updated a lens? Uh, I've, no, not a lens, but I have a lens adapter. 
So this is interesting. So I was like, how do you update this thing? So they gave me this, and I thought it was just like a front and back cap that they just put together, like an extra cap. But I started looking at it, and there is a USB ah. dingus on the mm. side. And what you do is you open this up, and you attach the lens to it as if it were a camera. And then it, it uses this attachment to firmware update the lens. I thought that was the coolest yeah. idea. Super Dude, cool. The idea Clever. of firmware updating a lens. A lens. You, know, <laughs> you know? The worst is, 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 is firmware insane. updating an Xbox controller. That's the yeah. that's the worst firmware update. Because it happens right in the Man. middle of a game. Yeah. Those those that is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna talk about you now. We're in camera mode. We're into film mode. And, yeah. And yeah. we're gonna introduce you to everybody on the stream and we're gonna talk about film. We're gonna talk about your show and then we're going to talk about uh journey your journey into motion graphics because you've been dabbling all these years as you were doing film stuff and now true and now you're like you're really hitting you're it. it still getting dabbling. these <laughs> nfts and man so um let's start from the beginning uh tell us about how you got into what you're doing and what your jobs are now and how you met and i'll just keep going i'm sure you'll forget after yeah. if i just list them like that but or we could just talk about some cool movies you've seen lately no that's for the recommends <laughs> section uh, yeah that's later yeah, that's later we've already done recommends Sicily, with them haven't 1976. we 1976 no. 1922 1922 yeah. oh you can't mess up a golden girls reference in the beginning of an interview <laughs> no i i um i started making really bad horror films with my friends with like a, a Best Buy camera, like so many people did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just fell in love with it and just kept doing it, making them just bad, just bad, bad, bad. Digital bad 8 or Mini DV? <clears throat> Mini DV. Nice, Mini nice. DV. And then eventually I got like a real camera, which was at the time a DVX 100. Mm -hmm. I still have one in and, my garage. Uh, yeah, it was like the <laughs> first camera that would do 24p because it would take the 30p and convert it down oh, to 24p. Yeah. Big time. That's when I knew I made it. Um, <laughs> and then um, I met Sashia on this application called MySpace. Oh, oh MySpace. wow. Sort of it. MySpace, um, huh? Yeah, it was it was the uh, original Facebook. It was top eight at first sight. Man. Yep. Uh, yeah. It was top Facebook with glitter. Sight. With glitter, yeah. yeah. Um, I miss and... MySpace. MySpace was I miss good. top eight. It was so right much the top eight. Than... It was like a big deal if you're in someone's top right. eight. Yeah, right. You had to really invest your time, right. and build your page up and put right. thought. Yeah, yeah. So right. and, and you had the music, the music that and... would auto play anytime yep. you went to someone's page. And if you yeah. were you know, mad at somebody, you would that's, remove that's... them from your top eight. That's yes. yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I knew she was the one because when I went to her page, Tool started playing. I was mm. like, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. But, you know, Which so is we ironic because start... you're not a huge Tool fan, and I am. I like Tool, though. No, he's just like a big Tool. tool. I, I am. Yeah, yeah. I just not yeah. like Tool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, you know, she was interested in writing and acting as well. So then we kind of, uh, through a friend, we ended up making a film together, a bunch of us, and she was involved. And then we became more involved, and she started writing to our films so that they became really bad horror films. From really bad horror films to well-written really bad horror films, nice. and then um, yeah, and the rest is history. We just kept making making films after that. So, uh, what's what's your side of the story? Yeah, was, yeah, I'll okay. take that. What's right. the real story? Yeah, <laughs> the real story is that when he friended me on MySpace, I deleted him. That's true. Uh. That's actually true. <laughs> Because um, it said um, "proud dad," and I was like, "I'm not getting involved with somebody." Yeah. That's <laughs> that happening. Delete. Did but he I just was, add uh, you out of the blue? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because back in the day, you know, <laughs> okay. you just go through gotcha. and you find local people that are cool and you say, hey, gotcha. what's up? Girls but, that you want to be friends with? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, I can't tell you how many Australian friends I had. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also, I had the wherewithal to send her a message along with the Fred request. Mm -hmm. Make it personal, you know, real personal mm -hmm. touch. Yep. And then if it wasn't for that message... That would this never would have happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that message. What was Wait that off. message? Promote it on. Yeah, promote it. Promote it on DM NFT. 
Yeah. I, I would know. love to be able. I don't even yeah, remember yeah. any of those passwords or anything. I don't even know how to. If that's even still there. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, you should frame that message. I'm, I'm very worried <laughs> that, that someone will find my MySpace one day and see all my angsty, yeah. like, uh, uh, freshly broken up with uh, yeah. blog posts. Mm. Yeah. They are oh, not good. Yeah. Oh, that would be that would be really interesting to be able to get into those archives, if you will. Super yeah. depressed and posting <laughs> random, you know, They're my, out there. my Chemical Romance songs. and <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, so y'all met, yeah. started doing stuff and things, and uh, yeah. started doing um, the films together. Now, how has your process improved over these years? Because I'm sure your 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 process, the writing, the acting, the lighting, the gear, the, all of that has uh, improved. I mean, money helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, having one no might money. say it rules everything around us. <laughs> Cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Having going from no money to uh, some money that we probably sh shouldn't be spending, but we're going to do it anyway, mm -hmm. made a big difference. Like when we knew we were starting to head in the right direction when we went from Home Depot lights, construction lights to actual yep. right. cinema lights. That's yeah. when we were like, OK, this might this might be happening because prior the first to that, time you buy like real equipment yeah you know yeah. it's yeah. like oh we, we've made it <laughs> uh -huh. we've made it and then you realize that you're you're addicted to it and yeah yeah it's yeah. hard yeah. to stop buying equipment you get yeah. that gear acquisition syndrome yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. there's like a general rule that whenever he says so i've been looking at this thing it's never <laughs> under 500 dollars ever <laughs> like i'm always yeah. like i can't wait for him to be like there's this thing i'm looking at and it's about a buck 50 and i'm like get it yeah <laughs> yeah Gear acquisition syndrome. Gas? Yeah. yeah. Hey, honey, I got gas. I got gas. The good kind it's... or the bad kind? I don't know which one's the bad kind. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, I or unluckily, I have both, so. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, um, ding, 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 there we go. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, though, how, you know, any kind of, like, artistic endeavor is always so GD expensive. And artists are always the ones that seem to be suffering, you know, right. in terms of like trying to make revenue on their art, you know, yeah. it's, you know, computers and cameras and, and all this mm -hmm. stuff is so expensive. And it's like, but it is more affordable now when you think back sure. on like those, oh, yeah. you know, MySpace times, think about the lights. Number one, think about mm -hmm. like, if you wanted to get good lights, you had to get those tungstens and they were hot mm -hmm. and bulky yes. and heavy. And now yes. you can get like a $60 LED light yep. you know yep. and just throw sixty dollars sixty dollars thirty dollars yep. right behind battery me. powered yeah. Yeah. yeah even cameras you know you're talking about the black magic the 6k you have i mean you can get the 4k version for like two grand or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. and it's like it's still a lot of money don't get me wrong but in Shoot comparison to on what... my phone dude yeah 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 it's two yeah. grand but like it, it's a two grand entry barrier to entry to to having access to 6k raw bra mm -hmm. like Oh yes, my gosh. but what y'all like, aren't what talking about is all the accessories that you've got to purchase, like 2K, yeah. and then you're talking, okay, let's get some lenses, we need Batteries, storage yeah, sure. for it, you're going to be able to edit it, okay, you need a computer as well. But you the know? computers are more affordable and do more for less now. You know, if you want to just edit with, like, Final Cut Pro or Premiere or something, you can get a laptop, and I mean, you couldn't even do it on a laptop back in the day. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. It is a little more affordable. It's still expensive, but yeah. it is more it's affordable not, than it was. It's not as expensive as film school, though. That's so true. That's usually, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. like a big conversation that I always have with people that are, like, I'm thinking of going to film school. I'm like, I mean, if you have money to blow and you just, you're into yeah. that kind of stuff and you just want to throw money around, like, sure, yeah, do it. Right. Um, but if you're going to be going into debt, it's not worth it. Just yeah. buy and don't and but then the flip side of that is like also don't buy the best equipment because you have no idea what to do with it and it's going to be a complete yeah. waste of money. So yeah. just buy decent equipment mm -hmm. and learn how to make stuff that looks like crap look better. That's your yeah. goal. Yeah. It's how to we, make how to get the best image out of what you have and then move from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really funny. We had, you know, uh back when I was in college, it was 
what was it that the XL one, the, oh, the yeah. XL one, silver yeah, XL1. and red one yeah, or yeah. whatever, yeah, that was just standard def, but it had removable lenses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that was a big deal. We had several kids in my college who were awful and wouldn't even finish their stuff, but like they were rich, so they all had XL one. So like, oh, I've right. got an XL one. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but you don't even know how to use it. You don't even know the secret. Yeah. Uh, key combination to hit to get full frame bars because they couldn't license empty bars in it or something. Is that, that true? The XL2 had bars. The XL1, oh. you had to do a secret thing to get just some full frame bars. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I was a Panasonic guy. Mini DV. Remember, yeah. remember then you had Mini DV. You had DVC Pro mm -hmm. and you had DV Cam, which looked yep. the same as far as the cassettes but the tape was different and yeah. some yeah. could play one but couldn't play the others like you could mm -hmm. put something on a mini dv if you did dv yes. cam it would you could record that on a mini dv but you couldn't record dvc pro onto the mini tapes it was Gosh, so I weird i forgot about these yeah like now you just throw a memory card in there and go yep yeah yeah memory cards were the best that was the, that was the best Maybe. like having to have it, having to do all these different tapes man i i totally forgot about those and then yeah. you had Digi beta as well. Digi you know? beta. Digi beta. Yeah. Man, mm. and I still have decks and cameras and all sorts of stuff that take that, and I should just put them in the garbage. <laughs> yep. Yep. I bought a I bought a, a beta deck, just a, a standard beta deck off of eBay because I was like, oh, I I can I, have one I can those. find someone that I can do some transfers for and stuff like that. Yeah. And I spent like two hundred fifty bucks, and it was gonna be my next my next my next job thing. But it's it's know? an interesting conversation because you know we talk about that stuff, but at the time it was the standard and it's like are we going to mm -hmm. be talking about cfast cards the same way in five years you know and i mean that that bleeds into everything yeah. you know if you're yeah if you're putting something on the web and it's mp4 are you going to even be are you even going to be able to play mp4 in 10 years sure mp4 you know? probably yeah but or mp4 other, has other... been around for a while but yeah, see but the at, CFAST at some point or, all that yeah. stuff becomes you know yeah. yeah, everything gets out, and they're they're talking about like even VHS and DVDs yeah. are going to degrade. All of them in the whole world are going to be all degraded by a certain point, if you, yeah. you know, because of the way that they degrade. And it's like you've got to back it up. At least MP4s are going to be savable, right? So you mm -hmm. could like pull them off an old drive, you know, yeah. if they're outdated. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, the cards you were talking about, the CFast cards, that's like what's in Black Magic. I haven't personally used them yet. I just jumped straight to using SSDs external oh, to record. Yeah. You know, using the T5 drive, which don't get the T7 on the Black Magic because even though it's faster at 100 megabytes a second or 1,000 megabytes a second, it actually has a buffer. Which, anyway, I'm nerding <laughs> out on film behind the scenes, you know. Um, I've been thinking about, about doing that, but I don't know. I, I feel like. Because I have the the 4.6K Ursa Mini Pro, mm -hmm. which I love, love that camera so much. But uh, it's you know it's it's I've had it for a while, and it's like I already had it repaired once. So my mind's starting to think now about what's my next investment because mm -hmm. there are a lot of money, so you got to start early. And yeah. so um, future proofing is something that I try to think about as much right. as I can because you get a new camera every three months, and it's you know. There's New always something moving better. so fast. Yeah. 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 I did upgrade to the Blackmagic uh, Pro, a 6K Pro, because I really wanted a viewfinder and I really wanted a tilt screen. And mm. those two things were worth it right there. I just. And the NDs, them. right? Has the NDs? Yeah. The NDs. Mm. There's just a, enough, there was enough features <laughs> there where it, it felt like a good move. But um, yeah. Yeah, it's well, the it's, company it's ended hard. up buying your old one from you, so that saved you a little bit of money too. That too, that too, that helped me get the upgrade. Um, but uh, let's go through the process a bit. Um, when you are starting on a film, I, I want to hear the process of of what order you do things in. Um, if it's very well, linear, it starts with her. Or... <laughs> uh, well, first I find a small child to sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's I got a couple. So you go you. to the pizza. Yeah. You go to the pizza place down the street, right? Is I, that how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I head over to Basement. DC. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I, I I find the secret pizza place. Um, I it's weird. I mean, usually it sounds really cliche, but uh, the writing process for me is just that I'll get a bunch of stories that are just constantly annoying the crap out of me, and they just sort of live in my brain. Yeah. And then they they like UFC style fight their way to the forefront, <clears throat> and then whichever one kind of sticks is the one. Oh, that... it's the sci-fi story with the arm bar. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, that'll be the one that, that I'll choose to write. But um, I also, I, like, I, I probably have, uh, I think I have, like, eight or nine uh, completed scripts, and then I have probably, like, another 40 or 45 uh, scripts that are just concepts that I write. And I'll just mm -hmm. sort of like first, second and third act it really quick. So I remember the details five years later, since it could be that long before I go back to it or never. Um, and then depending on where we are financially, I start to fish through all the concepts, like which one of these. So there's the ones like, that'll sit there. Which one of these can there. I do for? Yeah, they'll yeah, sit there yeah, forever. For the it's like, yeah, we're going to need like 50 grand for that. So that's yeah. never going to happen. We'll just keep that one back there. <laughs> yeah. And then sort of, you know. Uh, bring them up and and that's uh, that's usually like from there he's just like let me know when you need me like when the script is done and we're in pre-production and then that's where he jumps in how do yeah, you we kind of sorry no yeah so we kind of, we have like we both what we both focus on you know we have certain areas that we both excel in you know and mm -hmm. so we kind of let the other person take the lead we're very collaborative but there is a certain like if we're having if if there's some kind of debate on a, a story beat or something like that, I'm gonna defer to her because she's writing the story. Whereas if there's a certain debate about a lighting scenario, she may defer to me mm -hmm. because I'm lighting mm -hmm. it. So uh, I like to say all the time that we have we don't really step on each other's toes with what we do, and we're very collaborative. But that doesn't mean that I jump in and help out or do the other thing if they need to. So um, you know she 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 does a lot of the writing, a lot of the uh, production, a lot of the casting stuff, and I'll do a lot of the pre um, storyboarding. Just literally do everything. Hmm. No, I just I just do the storyboarding, <laughs> the directing, and the cinematography, and the and editing, the and the, the audio, and the color grading. That's it. <laughs> I mean, it's not that much. I mean, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do all the other stuff, and then usually on set, I'm also yeah stopping uh, midway and doing craft services. <laughs> yeah, and Eat acting. Everything. And then, yeah, that's all. so I'll yeah. we'll set the schedule so that my scene will end at the right time so that I could get yeah. out of costume and then into an apron and then over to the mm -hmm. kitchen to feed everybody for lunch and then <laughs> the same thing for dinner. So um, sets are usually exhausting. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. How do you yeah. decide, though? Like, how do you decide, OK, this is the script? Because if you have a bunch of them swimming around and you know, besides technical or money reasons, right? Besides that, besides like, oh, we can't do this because it would cost 50K. It's a big decision to make because you're going to mm -hmm. make that decision and move forward. It's almost like every single one is like starting a mini business, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be yeah. a long journey to get from point A to point Z on, on that <laughs> entire thing, right? Like it might be a yeah. year, it might be two years. Won't be two years. It won't be two years. Yeah. We're uh, we're the worst. We're really fickle with that because <laughs> it's by the time the film is done, we just hate it and we want to move on. I mean, that's right. kind of with anything we create, but yeah, yeah. it's like um, it's like making a, a daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, yeah the, making the, a, 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 a you hate it by, by the yearly end. any project, you know. By yearly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's more. You know, you know how kind of every year you go into uh, a mood musically and you really just start listening to a lot of this this specific year and then you mm -hmm. just you know and then you start going back into other stuff that's how it is with me it's like what have i been watching this year that's really sticking out mm -hmm. and what mood am i in mm. and yeah, um that'll be what we pick and then you know then i have to filter through that as in terms of finances what is feasible and so um our last film was just i had always wanted to write something that was cult related. I've had uh, a fascination with the, just, just the psychology of how people join cults, how otherwise incredibly intelligent people get sucked into it. And so 
um, that was that was just where I went with that. I think the the biggest challenge for me is always kind of I I live in between uh, wanting like giving a shit and then not giving too much of a shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> because I uh, I like I love movies that make me think, mm-hmm. and um, I love being able to finish watching a film and have 10 people in a room have five different interpretations of how that could have potentially ended and what was really going on and Mm. be able to start that conversation. Mm -hmm. So I've been told that my writing is really confusing and, you know, um, I've gotten the weirdest interpretations of, of my film and I'm like, what corn? How did we get what? It (laughs) it was a cornfield, right? Like, what are you talking about? (laughs) There was no cornfield. Um, so and then you say, as an award-winning writer, I cannot oh, take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's. I like to kind of hear what people are gonna say, but so it's like I, I have to be cognizant of the fact that I don't want to confuse people to the point where they're like, I'm never watching your stuff again because I don't mm-hmm. understand it. Sort of towing that line, uh, but of also, but also being able to say, this is how I want to write it, mm-hmm. and uh, if you don't get it, you know, you don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> yeah. Do you? You mentioned that, like, you're paying attention to what people are enjoying at the moment, right? You're paying attention to what people, like, what audiences are enjoying. Like, how much of that influences what you do? Um, I, I, the only way I can think of it is because I don't really make films, I, but I do make TikToks, which are super short. And one of the things that I do is I think what, all stories. what are the trends right now? What are people into yeah. right now? What would people, yeah. you know, whether that's like, like a, I'll, I'll send Dave like a new audio and say, hey, we should do use something this, with this with this or we should, you know, yeah, it helps yeah, yeah. you be it helps you think of fun ideas because you kind of work backwards. Sometimes you think of an idea and then you come up with the, the story. Sometimes you get the audio for something like on TikTok, this is what the people are doing. This is the trend, and it, it kind of goes the other way. Do you allow like trends <laughs> to influence? How can in this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you allow the trends to influence? Maybe not like your writing specifically, but what type of film you're gonna do next? No, not at all. Good, good. I don't care what everyone likes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to put it any other way because. It's um, unlike TikTok and unlike YouTube and and any online source, um, the indie film world is so different from Hollywood. It's a completely Mm, different thing. So whatever's trending in Hollywood, it's irrelevant once you get into, you know, micro budget filming and those film fests. Um, If somebody were to do that, I I feel like that would actually work against them because a single film fest isn't going to want 17 sci-fi movies if that's what's cool yeah. that year. Yeah. You right. want to stand out, actually. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah. That's just a... make whatever you make. Yeah. Yeah. That, that said, there are in. certain kind of um, genres, for lack of a better phrase, that play better on certain platforms. Absolutely. You know, you know, if you're mm-hmm. putting stuff on YouTube, putting a 30-minute drama isn't going to gain a lot as much views as a, an eight-minute sci-fi spectacle, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that... And not that you should write towards that, but it's just good to know that. So if you're making something like we, our last film was, uh, uh, was a 30 minute drama, and that's not gonna play on YouTube. So, you know, we put it out to festivals. She won an award for it, and um, you know, <laughs> it's good to recognize that what audience plays, that would play best for, and kind of maybe focus a little bit more on that. Not that you shouldn't release it everywhere, but having that focus can help, you know, get the most kind of like mileage, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, out of the sure. film. Right. It's hard to find a balance for me sometimes between like, okay, what is what do I want to do and what is everybody else expecting or what does everybody else want to see? And mm-hmm. and you don't wanna you don't want to compromise your creativity. You don't want to compromise your own vision. You don't want to compromise your goals. But you also want to be successful. You know, yeah. and, and you also want to make money and, and things. Um, but that being said, there, it, it is true a lot of the time, I think, that, like, even if you're not getting traction in certain things, it, you try different things, one of them is going to one of them is gonna stick. You know, mm-hmm. you keep doing and what you want to do and people, there will be an audience that will show up. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. It, it, it's tough. Um, a lot of people want to be their own boss and... and be independent and do their own thing and it's hard to it's hard to do 
Yeah, there, there is a fine line, especially if it's your only source of income. I mean, mm-hmm. as we all know, yeah. you know, uh, I would love to just do uh, graphics and films or whatever it is that I like, but at some point I have to pay the mortgage, and so I'm going to have to make something that somebody else wants, right? Uh, yeah. In order to do that, so there's yeah, there's definitely a balance. Now, for, for the you, from the fil- <laughs> for you, that's just you're you're able to just work a full time job, yeah. and that's the thing that people are wanting to see, and that's where. You, you get your money so then you can yeah. not compromise when you get the film yeah mm-hmm. selling out so we don't have to right <laughs> sell sell out when you're working for the man so you don't have to yeah. sell out on the film it's not selling one out. for He's the meal one it. for the real yeah right it's yeah. not really selling it's out but yeah gotta make ends meet right i have no problem with people selling out <laughs> i get it i would Whatever. do it in a heartbeat I you it. know yeah I would do if it somebody in a came, If somebody I think... came to me and said, I'll give you $10 million to make some crappy movie, I'd be yeah. like, where do I sign? Sharknado 12. Where do I sign? Because right. yeah. <laughs> I'll take that money and I'll go make something I like. Yeah. I give I give so much crap to uh, uh, Gwen Stefani and Mark McGrath, you know, <laughs> yeah. for like hardcore selling out. But I can't say that I wouldn't do the same thing. Right. right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just maybe I'm just jealous. Well, I think it's I think it's <laughs> I think it all stems from that thing of like artists need to be poor in order to be like taken seriously. Yeah, you I know? don't know I don't know about that. I don't know about that. At least at like, first. Yeah. Yeah, I maybe. Guess, but it's it's like I don't know. I, I always feel like there's like this stigma if an artist is making a lot of money that you know, what you know, what do they know or or do you know what I mean? It's not that they can't not, not that I guess a lot of it depends on how they started or whatever, but you know, it's it's just, I don't know. I just no, I know what you're saying. Like, like think about yeah. e- mm-hmm. Elon Musk's wife, right? Drop uh, all of a sudden, like, oh, Elon Musk's wife is is on uh, is on Nifty Gateway, and and what did everybody say? Oh, well, they're already rich. What do they need to be on there for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's kind of like that. You yeah. know, like oh, you already have money, and it, it doesn't like, mean what? it doesn't mean anything in particular. But like that's that's the mentality that people have when they see that, yeah, you know, toward you. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely in film as well. When someone's like, uh, you know, you watch a film and you go, oh well, they have a they got a three million dollar budget. Like, well, how they get a three million dollar budget? Like, oh well, that's like Scorsese's great nephew, and you're like, of course it is, right? You know, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and you get that a lot, and um, we we would get that at fests as well. Um, where we went to this one festival once where uh, it, it was interesting to watch the, the the change where Paul had known the person that was running this festival for a while and he had been with them before they were anybody. Like he was helping mm-hmm. them set up the banners. Like it was, yeah. it was really small and they got bigger and they started getting more sponsors and they started getting films from filmmakers that were had a bit more clout. And all of a sudden, the movies that he would be making, which was now films we were making, were getting like the 8.30 a.m. Sunday spot, which nobody is going to that. Yeah. And then they would start reserving all of the 7 to 9 p.m. Saturday nights and Friday nights for at one time. It was like one of the actors from The Sopranos made Mm -hmm. like a short film and everybody was there for that guy. And, you know, that's when I I just got to a point where I was like, why are we here? Like nobody cares that we're here. And, you know, so that's that's sort of a I don't know. I have I have a, a kind of like hate relationship, kind of like hate uh, with with film festivals. I, I they're important and I get it, but I don't the same way that I'm not really looking to whatever's in fashion to mm-hmm. pick subject matter. I don't really look to what happens in a film festival. You know, you go to like a winning festival. award for your writing. You wouldn't. <laughs> I'm going to punch you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that doesn't mean anything. I don't know. You well, know, that's the thing. It's that, lovely. It's, yeah. I'm like I say that I'm not gonna act like I don't appreciate it. It's, I mean, I didn't. When they said my name, I just kept staring at him, and he's like, "They yeah. said your name," and I was like, "No, they didn't." Yeah. There's well, no that's the way. thing. That's the thing. I mm-hmm. thought they were gonna, gonna give it to him because the the way fests work is they'll sort of like hint you to you in an email like. Hey, are you coming to the awards ceremony? And right. you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't know. And they're like, are you sure you don't want to come to the awards ceremony? And right. you're like, oh, I should go to the awards yeah. ceremony. Mm-hmm. Right. But they don't tell you why. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was just sitting there like they're clearly going to give it to him for like cinematography or something. And mm-hmm. why the hell do they just say my name? <laughs> and that's a lovely moment. But 
Uh, but it, you know, what does it mean overall? Yeah, like because I, that same I'm film same got person. rejected from so many festivals. So totally. you have one fest telling you that this is the best film that's been written in our entire festival, and then you have another festival that's like, we're not even going to play this piece yeah. of crap. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, yeah. it's all arbitrary. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Hmm. So, what, what, what? Uh, do you have one that you would write, or or that you would do? Uh, one specific script saved away that it's like, okay, we've made it. When you have we've unlimited money. We've got infinite money. funds. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is the film probably we're going to make. I probably have like 10 or 12. Okay. Of those. How often, how often are you writing? Um, she writes really quick. I write very Because she's got to get that story mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I write really fast. And then when, I, when I'm really going to seriously take a script on, if we're actually going to film it, then I run through it again. And then I start making edits mm-hmm. um, because we're both really impatient in that way. Yeah. Uh, when I hear people say, I've been writing this script for eight years. I'm like, eight years? What? How yeah. could you still <laughs> care about that? After, right. eight, year, I yeah. Would, yeah. after eight weeks, I'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm over it. You got to get um, the idea out of your brain. I get that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I just... like I, I had like one or two stories that I wanted to write. And this is back when I was working for the man, you know, and every single day I was driving to work, I was thinking about this yeah. stupid story. I was like, I got to write this. I got to write this. I got to write this. Finally, I was like, I'm writing the story. And I did it. It was like over the course of three or four nights at home. And I, it was like a, 90 minute script or 75 or 75 page script, 90 minute script or something like that. And then I sent it off to my friends and they were like, I hate it, you know? (laughs) And I was like, okay, well at least it's out of my brain. Yeah. But that, that. but that, but that brings up another good point in that, um, uh, is that like that feedback that you're getting from your friends, Mm -hmm. you know, cause you so, so often, this is something I harp, harp on about It's So, so often your friends are just going to be like, Oh, it's, you made something. It's so cool. And I appreciate Mm -hmm. the love for that. But, you know, for me anyway, I can't speak for everybody, obviously, but for me, that having that honest feedback from somebody is so much more valuable than anybody telling me they love something I did just right. because they don't want to offend me or, you know, totally. they whatever reason. Because if, like she says it all the time, if 10 people tell you that I didn't understand that part of the story, well, then I need to focus. I need to think about that part right. of the story. Maybe it's not mm-hmm. portraying what I want. And that doesn't mean that you have to change it but that you have to think about, are you really relating what you want to put out there properly? Yeah. Yeah. Do you outline a lot before you yeah. write? Uh, yeah. But I also, I also write out of order. So I'll think okay. of the ending of a story first. Yeah. How, how is this ending? Or I'll just think of some weird random middle scene that I'm like, I really want to film something that has two people that, or write something that is uh, sort of an emotional scene between two people in a bar. Why would they be in a bar? Mm-hmm. How did they get to the bar? Who owns yeah. the bar? And then I just sort of like walk, work out that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes it'll just come first, second, and third. Like it's just, it's just whatever way they pop in there. If somebody was watching me while I drove, they would think that I was uh, like that I had complete personality disorder. <laughs> like as I'm sitting at a light, I will talk as the character like what is this character like and then i'm just like mm. having the conversation with you know two people four people in a in a car and i'm talking that's to all great, of them though like that's that is great. That really that's yeah. extremely like... funny and like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i do the same thing but like but with you're... arguments you know yes yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. i'll remember what an i should have said from was... like two yes. months ago and it's yeah. like well this is your stance on this and blah 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 yeah. <laughs> It's like now I'll be prepared next time that comes yeah. up again in conversation. Well, that's and like it, your it never opinion, will. man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's something great about non-linear writing, and I use a program actually called Scrivener when I write what I the things I write, and most of it's like writing a tutorial or something, not necessarily yeah. like a script. Um, but I love the way that it's set up because it it's set up almost like they're note cards on the left side there. You can actually put it in a note card view, which is silly, but they're set up like <laughs> note cards. So you have these little cards on the left that it's like, here's the intro. Here's this section with, uh, if I'm doing a tutorial, here's this section where you do this sim and here's the section where you do this and they're there. And I'm like, 
Oh, I need to mention this in the simulation part, and I'll pop back to that card, and I'll write a little paragraph, and then you can rearrange the paragraphs, and then you can export the whole thing as a script. And mm -hmm. I like that, that way of doing things, because like you said, it's like, oh, you want a scene in the bar. Well, you write down bar scene on that quote-unquote card in Scrivener, and then you come back, you sit down, you write that, and that's just there. It's ready to go, and you just pop that into the script wherever it needs yeah. to go. Um, but outlining is such a great thing. I don't. I never understood how somebody could sit down and just write a story from beginning to end without anything else. I think sometimes that that can kind of be the downfall of why a script takes eight years. Yeah. Uh, on top of just life, you know, slapping you upside the head and things happening. But mm -hmm. I think people just uh, they sit down and they think of it too literally, and that it's like I must start this story, and then I go here and here and here, and it doesn't work that way because life doesn't work that way nothing's really in order so mm -hmm. you kind of have to work around those things um, but i mean everybody has their own their their own weird little quirks when they write uh, that, mm -hmm. that's just kind of what i do and um, i always write to a soundtrack like i'll make a playlist that fits the mood of that story and then yeah. always listen to that while i'm writing it that's um cool. that sometimes is also how a, a concept will come up if i hear i find a new artist um, I'll hear a story or hear a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll hear a song or an album that then strikes what I think the video to that would look like if there's not a video or what am I feeling yeah. when I hear this and then like, jump off of that mood. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So tell us about your show. No, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it. Well, yeah. Now. So we, I, I'm a big podcast listener. Or used to be when I drove a lot, but um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there was never any like podcast that dealt with the level of filmmaking that I'm at. You know, mm -hmm. it was always like people talk about low budget films and they're talking about five and ten million dollars. Right. And I'm like, what about <laughs> five or ten thousand dollars? Like, right. where? What about you know, five hundred? Yeah, yeah, five dollars. Five dollars for that yeah. recently, and so um, I wanted to have, I wanted to start one that came from that perspective of like people that were making films on our, on our level, but also like rolling into that. Um, Cause we do, we talk and we have guests on, uh, but I also, we also wanted to kind of give our thoughts on films from film, from people that are at our level of filmmaking as well. Or you higher. Know? Or higher. Yeah. yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. we watch a lot of indie films and we'll talk about them. And um, we have, we've been lucky enough to have some really great guests on, Mm -hmm. um dps and actors and directors and producers and um people like that yeah. um but yeah there was you know there was no there was nothing for that and and then we filled that niche hopefully what, what we tried to <laughs> what, what was who has been your favorite guest so far i mean besides us uh, of course for me it's been lou taylor pucci easily yeah, you're very yeah you you um, actually say that on the trailer, don't you? Don't you say that name on the trailer? Yeah, yeah, so, I think so. Yeah. He was he's such a wild guy. We 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 don't do video, we just do the audio, but his whole interview, <laughs> he was in a cowboy hat and no shirt. And he would just like get up and walk away randomly and come back and finish the conversation. Oh my gosh. It was such a And I'm like I we had him on because we because I'm a huge fan of his work. I think he's like one of the most underrated actors out there, but he um he, uh, yeah, he was a blast to talk to. That one, actually, I don't really edit the podcast a lot, you know, because we kind of just go. Yeah. Uh, but Same that here. one I had to I edit, edit a lot. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, because he walked away. Something and he would just get up and walk away, and we're like, what is he Are doing? Are we done? What's happening? <laughs> what is he doing? Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know. But we've had Jessica Lee Gagne, who's yeah, she's a favorite say, of ours. She's a my, DP. My favorite would probably, if I had to pick my favorite, uh, <laughs> um. Jessica Lee Genyi and Jodie Lee Lipes are yeah. two of my, like, actually two of my favorite cinematographers who have, and it's not like that have only done 10,000 and under budget films. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they do amazing work. And when I reached out to Jessica Lee, I was like, there's no way she's going to answer me back. Mm -hmm. And she did. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so she came on. Same thing with Jodie Lee Lipes. I, I spoke with, uh, with his um, representation and then his manager and, um, they, they hooked everything up, but I think that, uh, we were under the impression that 
it would be impossible to get people of this caliber on the show. But a lot of people don't think about DPs when they watch films. And I think that for DPs, they're like, you want to talk to me about something? Right. I wasn't the director. I didn't yeah. star in it. Uh, okay. And that usually seems to be the 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 confusion with them. is like they're like, why? <laughs> Yeah. Why would you want to talk yeah. to us? Um, but we watch movies so differently. But the average moviegoer, I've said this before, most people don't know that directors aren't DPs. Yeah. They think that they're running the camera and they're and some do, but that's mm -hmm. certainly not the norm. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that the average person thinks about the fact that there's somebody on set that specifically specializes in getting those visuals and is in control of the lighting for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly important. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Do you... Okay, well, first of all, I, th I think it's good that we talked about some of your favorites because I feel like if somebody wants to listen to your show for the first time, those are the ones they should probably grab, you know, and check them well, out, those, right? those are the ones I was fangirling the hardest on. Yeah. <laughs> are those the <laughs> best not. episodes then? Like, what what was, what was should you should somebody listen to for the first time? Oh. Um, I, I mean, it's going to de that depends on the person. I, I, I guess, would yeah. actually say Ryan Connolly from Film Riot. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because he he's was a, a good, big was reason a why we started thinking about doing this type of po podcast, because he was so helpful in that process of, of learning how to improve on filmmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are interested in film and you've not heard of Film Riot, you really should check the show out. And we're like old school. We used to watch it like weekly on TV, you know, watch it on the TV. And and, you know, he always has such uh, really helpful notes and they're hilarious. Him and, and Josh are hilarious and would do all these great skits. And um, so yep. he was another person that we're like, he's not going to be on the show. And so when he <laughs> was, um, it was really interesting because there were some crazy things that happened on his set that we would have never known. Mm -hmm. because you just assume, well, it's Ryan Connolly. He's probably got that all figured out. That's what that's what Film Riot is, and no. Spoiler alert, none yeah, of us have alert. anything figured out. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert, there was disasters that he had to get through, and so that, that I would say start there. Yeah. Cool. Do I any... really enjoyed the Valentina V episode. She's great. Yes. She's yeah, great. Yeah, she's... I, yes. it, it, it's so funny because I found, I found her on TikTok of all places, mm -hmm. you know? I guess the algorithm knew that I, you know, liked production and stuff like that. And so I saw a bunch of her stuff that she did. So I started following her. Then I started following her on Instagram. And then I hit you up, Paul. And I was like, hey, you should have Valentina V on. You're like, dude, we already did. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Great. I'm going to listen to that episode shows right how now. much you listen, Matt. Right. <laughs> do, you have, do you ever have any people on the show where it, it leads to a possible connection? Like a possible yeah, actually we collab had, um, or something. We had this guy Richard Raymond on, who's a, a filmmaker, um, and you know we you know we became friends and started chatting, and he was sending us scripts, and he's like working with like big name, you know, A list celebrities now and and stuff, and and that was like a really nice connection because it was somebody that was. It's I think it's it's nice to have somebody in in to at least to know in that level to kind of just see what that world is like because the types of films we make and what we do and how we create isn't always going to flow in that environment, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think it's good to have that. If you're, if you're able to kind of connect with somebody that is, is at that level just to kind of get a feel for it, if it's even something that you would enjoy doing, because I often wonder like, am I going to enjoy making a, huge budget film as much as I enjoy making the films we, right. we do now because of all the, like we had a, we had a guest on and they were telling us that they wrote a film and they were directing it a couple million dollars and they couldn't even cast yeah. who they wanted in it. They had to cast who the studio said because they needed marketable yeah. stars and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, you know, the more money, the less control. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like yeah. your personal money, I guess. Right. right. Like yeah. somebody else's money, they're going to want to, control things but yeah you lose your ability to control all of that stuff at that point so unless you're yeah. like chris nolan or yeah, something yeah the amount yeah. of freedom is the amount of freedom is offered up in terms of how many asses you can get in the seats basically if you're the kind of filmmaker that no matter what you do if you are uh you know quentin tarantino is one of my favorite directors and he he 
pretty much he he doesn't come off come off as the type of person that's like oh sure whatever you want to do you know right um let's do all the things you you want to do want to (laughs) do so um yeah you have to sort of be in that that caliber of filmmaking to and even still you're you're kind of fighting it picking small things here and there but scorsese um, still has to fight to get what he wants sometimes to fund his own films because the studios didn't think it was going to do well um Mm -hmm. silence i think was the film that he did um and uh, he put a lot of money into because it was out of his you know what people really know him for Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh i always like that i was i always like when directors sort of yeah move out of their comfort zone and do something different shutter any artist really yeah shutter island's one of my favorite films that most people don't associate to martin scorsese Mm -hmm. um but I, i mean i like his gangster films too and you know and all of that but for me, Shutter Island was amazing, and and uh, I, I think like that, that people have to like be allowed to maybe flop sometimes. We we talk a lot about M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, M Night's like someone that you either love or hate. There's really mm-hmm. no gray area with him, and uh, this this goes into what I've said before so many times on Go Gorilla is that I could like you as an artist and not necessarily like all of your work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have to love everything you do and it's subjective, right? I could love something that somebody else hates. Um, and so same with, same with actual films. Like we say a lot on the show, how, how like this film didn't work for us, but I'm so glad it was made because it was original. It wasn't based on a comic book or, or a story, which I love. I love comic book films too, but, um, I appreciate any film that's original, and even if I didn't like it, I'm really glad that it was made. For sure. Sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, who would Tell be me your more about M Night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is there a twist? I feel like you didn't finish the 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 your 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 what you were saying. Yeah. About what's the, the twist? Night? What's the twist? Yeah. Them? Where's the oh, twist? Was, no, I think well, he's just actually that, right here. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, just that uh, that I, I feel like he gets picked apart a lot. And Mm -hmm. he's done stuff that I've walked out of the theater and just been like, why does he keep doing this to me? Like, I come in here (laughs) with such high hopes, and then he does that. It's an abusive relationship. dead the entire time? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, it turns out he was Brad Pitt the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I always, you know, deep down, I'm like, I'm not going to do this again in the theater. I'm just going to wait. But then every time I just go right back, I can't help yeah. it because mm-hmm. I just love that. Even if it's something I don't like to do, he has an original idea and he sticks with it. And mm-hmm. I really appreciate that. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> who, what a twist. Who would be your ultimate get then? As a guest or I, as Oh, a... I can't answer. There's so many people. So mm-hmm. like uh, narrow what it a down. Twist. Bruce Campbell. Yeah. He would say, Oh, Bruce Campbell. that would be good. Yeah. Love myself some Bruce Campbell. Uh, yeah, so but... I have a funny story about Paul and Bruce Campbell. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. I'd say, but, well, but let me just preface the story by saying I don't usually like um, uh, conform to that whole like idea of like celebrity and like fans and you know like they're just like people too. But there are a couple people that I completely fan out about, and he's one of them. Yep. So go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So we went to um, a horror convention many many moons ago. And you had to basically, it was like a lotto. You had to get in to get into the line to even meet Mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. And so we made it. We were the third to last ticket. Wow. Almost didn't get there because it was like in Jersey. We drove there, whatever. Had no idea there was going to be a lotto. Just made it in time. Um, This was also a uh, the day that I literally ran into Sid Haig, who does all of um, the. He was in Devil's Rejects. He does all of Rob Zombie's movies. and he's massive, and I was on my way to the bathroom, and he wasn't looking where he was going. I wasn't looking where I was going, and we just slammed into each other. I hit the ground, and he's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, holy shit, you're sitting. <laughs> and he picked me up off the floor, and uh, so like I came because his... he's massive. He, he passed, unfortunately, recently. He was really cool, though. <laughs> um, and... He picked you up by your head and just yeah, yeah. <laughs> put you back up. Yeah. Like, me down. Um, <laughs> Uh, we got we were in this line. It was in the middle of winter and three quarters of the line was outside and it was January mm-hmm. um, and we're in New York. So that's cold. <laughs> yeah, it is. We we're freezing and we we're in the line, I think, two and a half hours before we got to the inside portion of the hotel. 
and you could see him from a distance. And we had um, we had his son with us. And some woman comes up and she goes, oh, Bruce Campbell doesn't want anyone waiting if they have kids come to the front. And I was like, where were you two and a half hours yeah. ago? <laughs> like, I felt like funny. that was a passive aggressive way for them saying, like, really, you're going to make your kid wait for you with you? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, and so we he was like so excited. And I had gotten him um, like toys that were still in the box of Evil Dead and Army of Darkness. Mm -hmm. He had. And we brought them with us to sign. And I was like, oh, my God, how exciting for you. Like, he's right there and yay. And we got up to the table and he's like, Bruce Campbell goes, hey, it's a kooky family, whatever. And it's <laughs> creepy. It was creepy. creepy or so. Yeah. yeah. And I look over at Paul and he completely garfed out on me. Just froze. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me right now? Uh, <laughs> We've been on this line for like three hours and you're not going to say anything. Yeah. And Bruce Campbell was just staring at him like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, funny. He is a huge fan of yours and he's really excited to meet you. And Paul just stood there. It was like that scene. It, in felt Chris like a, it was uh, like in Christmas story when yeah, Randy yeah. couldn't yeah. talk when he got, finally got to Santa Claus. And I was like, I can't believe he yeah. froze. And he just walked away from him. And you walk away, and you're like, oh, I didn't say anything. I, was I like, should I have said. Yeah. Yeah. And he was funny. just like, you were just looking at me. You were like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and like, the next week you're in the car, and you're like, oh, that's what I should have said. Yeah. yeah. Just like Matt. I think I did say <clears> something. <throat> I don't remember what it was. I think I asked him. By force, because they were doing a Q&A. No, no, that was later. But I did ask because he had, he had mentioned something. I was like, oh, they, they let you out of here once in a while or something. I, I don't know. I made some kind of stupid, con you know. It's like when you're like really young and you're actually talking to the hot girl and you're like, uh, I like boats. You know, you're like, you have no idea what to say. <laughs> I like toidles. Yeah. My, uh, my favorite, uh, Bruce Campbell movie is Bubba Hotep. Bubba have Hotep. you seen it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Seen Love that one. <laughs> yeah. It's, we, that, that one is plays like Elvis. so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Like he, Elvis at like In he is Elvis yeah. and he switched places with someone else who looked like Elvis yeah. so that he could, you know, go on to retirement or whatever. But yeah, he's in a nursing home and his best friend is a black guy who is JFK. Yeah. Who thinks he's JFK. <laughs> yeah. So funny. I haven't seen that one in forever. That was a good one. See, was gosh, one. I'm the worst when it comes to films. Y'all just have to keep me updated. And... See, I used to, I used to go see back was when I was in college, I would go see every single independent film that was made, you know, go down to the Magnolia downtown and see everything, you know, and a lot of them were very bad. You know, the trailers made them look good, but they ended mm -hmm. up being really, really bad, mm -hmm. you know, but there were some, there were some gems out there that I absolutely loved. And I, 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 I feel like, especially nowadays, you know, and I've heard this a lot that um, that studios, especially with COVID now, aren't willing to invest money in smaller, you know, productions mm -hmm. and lower budget films because they don't know whether they're going to make that money back. Right? Yeah. I mean, it started before COVID even. Um, you know, you think about like back in the day when you had all those movies that were like fifty million dollars and they were dramas. They don't make those anymore, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and so they are already kind of like starting that big gap of like, you either making a hundred million dollar Spider Man movie or you're making like a ten million dollar horror movie or whatever, you know. Yeah. So that there was the, and that's why like when Baby Driver came out, because I like Edgar Wright. I think he's a great mm -hmm. director. Baby Driver was like a 30 or 40 million dollar that was just like an original story and so it was good to see something like that come out but you need someone like Edgar Wright to do it you know otherwise they're not going to give it to anybody yeah so uh, I can't believe how fast we're flying through this um, I know it's already been an hour and a half almost um, I wanted to we're just that goddamn interesting <laughs> no it's just when you're when you're having great conversations yeah. with friends and good people you know, there's been a few shows where we've had to really push. More. <laughs> you know, come on, like, talk, talk to, to us. That's about why ourselves. we didn't need. We knew we didn't need any notes. Right. We didn't need any notes yeah. for the show. Tell us yeah. about the motion graphics or 3D or VFX side yeah. of this. Yeah. Why? Why? I, I mean, I I can only assume that like, especially having the same type of background you go into production and then you're like oh i need to edit this and then you're like oh i need some special effects i'm assuming yeah. 
that's probably the same path you took. It's exactly that path. Yeah. Because uh, I grew up in a small town, and so I didn't even know anybody that could do it, mm-hmm. even if I had money or, or whatever. So I had to learn it all myself, by myself. And then, um, you know, I went to the uh, Andrew Kramer School of uh, Visual Effects, mm-hmm. like most people, mm-hmm. and that's where <laughs> kind of it started, you know. And um, That'd be a I good was, shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I graduated from, like, on the back of your car, mm-hmm. University of Andrew Kramer. Yeah, um, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, but then, but my big thing was always like, I never wanted to do that specific tutorial. You know, you see people do the yeah. tutorial and they do this exact Fly halfway from through the space. tutorial. I'm like, yeah, yeah. halfway yeah. through the tutorial, I'm thinking like, well, what if I do this instead? And then I like never make it to the end of this tutorial. Which I wanted is good. To do that's a, that's yeah. perfect. It teaches you what you need to learn. You don't end up with the same result as everybody else. Mm-hmm. You can, put it, you can put it on your reel. You can put it on your reel. Yeah. 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 Some of my reels though. Whew. Yeah, wow. uh, that's my current yeah, I mean, all of them. Yeah, yeah, True. yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's how I, uh, ours is. But then I started like you know putting my work out there and then getting responses from like people that would say, "Hey, can you make me something for a dollar?" And I'm like, "Yes, a dollar, I'll do it." <laughs> and then it just kind of snowballed from there. And then you know I started getting um, the first thing you ever and... really made was um, a 2D castle. Yeah. Mm. You made like a 3D a... castle. No. A two and a half D castle, I think it was. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't three yeah. D. It wasn't complete three D, and it was like the worst looking thing ever. But at the time, <laughs> like I didn't know any better, and he didn't know any better. And he was like, "Look, I just built this whole castle. Is this not the coolest thing ever?" Yeah. <laughs> that was like fourteen years ago. But that's yeah. the thing. Like, if you're able to get into it and you're doing indie film, that's going to be the best way to get the mm-hmm. shots that you want because you're not going to be able to pay somebody to do these extravagant things. Yeah. One one of my favorites uh one of my favorite directors, writers, whatever uh is um I can't remember his name. <laughs> um she's <laughs> uh he did Godzilla make? and Star Wars. Which Godzilla? Um, Gareth, oh, Edwards. Gareth Edwards Star Wars, Gosh, yeah. Yeah, Gareth Edwards seeing him speak at the Adobe booth uh yeah. years and years ago for with like seven people in front of him, you know like completely changed my career yeah it, it was it, he and you know it was so nice seeing him go on to do bigger and better things because he knew what we were doing you know in yeah. in motion graphics and stuff yeah yeah it's 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 interesting when you see that there's certain directors there and just people in the industry in general that you know can relate to that kind of um beginning you know that self-taught Mm-hmm. kind of um you know just scrapping like i'd work at the movie theater all day and then come home and all night i'd be watching tutorials making things and mm-hmm. um that's you know and, and when you're self-taught that's kind of the route you have to take because you still got to make them bills yep. and back in the day you were working with gate and d simone where we made the yeah. limited ed- limited edition gate and d simone <laughs> i was shirt. looking for that shirt to wear today but i couldn't that's find funny it. yeah i don't know <laughs> where that i've got mine it kind of got stretched yeah. out so. yeah, yeah mine too. i, ha- I think i tough. have mine yeah and i still yeah. have yeah the i still talk, talked to gate in the other day the finger the yeah finger. the two fingers out yeah, of the computer. I still have it. yeah or the yeah, 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 or yeah. fit the fist the fist bump right that's what right? no that was oh that's right that was ours wasn't it or wait no he had the two fists coming out of the computers yeah that's right yeah 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 he, he works. At, he works at I Nickelodeon now, and he's doing some uh, really amazing stuff over there. Actually, he just yeah. released like a web series of stuff he drew for Nickelodeon, which Shout is really cool. Yeah. Shout out to Gaten. That's awesome. But y'all were both like listening to the show at work. Oh yeah, way back in the day when we were talking about like Octane version two. You're like, wouldn't it be cool mm-hmm. if someone from Octane would come on our show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now it's like. The main like, hub of uh, had dinner with stuff. Jules the other day, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no you do. Game. No, really, really glad that that Jules and and the Otoy team really got into the whole community aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that that's is, so important. So important. That's yeah. one of the things that drew me to Cinema 4D was the community of it all. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because they really under they really understand that side of it and how important it is. And just I think, I mean, I don't know them. They could be jerks. I don't think so, (laughs) but they just really seem to enjoy the community, you know, talking to people and seeing what the feedback is and what would help out and stuff. How did you get, so you were doing Andrew Kramer and stuff, but how did you get into the 3D, Cinema 4D aspects of it? Well, I mean, that was, that just kind of was like a natural 
leap for me because I always want to like go bigger and, and make cooler things. And, and so uh, I actually started in 3DS Max. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he was, you know, Andrew Kramer doing like these fake 2D, you know, 2.5D things. I was like, what if I made 3D things, actual mm-hmm. 3D things? And then I got a copy of 3DS Max, started making stuff in that. And then, um, and then, cin- and then I was exposed to cinema, and I was like, "Oh, this is a lot easier." Mm-hmm. You know? Much, much easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's but the rest. You, and the, you, and I think, but you have Octane, right? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, like you, I don't know. It seems like at some point you made a huge leap from, like, into what you're doing now. And I didn't know if like there's some point where you. We're learning specifically or spending a bunch of extra time at night doing <laughs> tutorials and things. Like, what is your... <laughs> is is that laugh yeah. because you were or because you weren't? Because I was, yeah. Because yeah. he's completely obsessive. And mm-hmm. I think um, I could safely say that probably 60% of the 14 years we've been together has been of him learning Watching tutorials and <laughs> yeah. creating um it for anyone out there higher, for right. anyone out there who's thinking of dating <laughs> such person um just if you don't mm-hmm. enjoy time on your own it is not going to work yeah uh, mm-hmm. you, you've got to be able to survive on your own and mm-hmm. um i'm very solitary in a lot of ways so i'm like all right fine go do your thing but i do have to like bring his lunch to him I check his pulse. <laughs> I, bring, I take the plate away. I'll tap him on the shoulder like, hey, did you brush your teeth yet? Because it's like 1130. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. And then he'll go brush his teeth. And I'm like, hey, um, did you shower? Because it's like <laughs> did you shower in July? And you haven't showered. Never today. mind. I can tell. You haven't showered. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, I need you to do that yeah. for me. <laughs> we actually had um, a, uh, an interesting conversation about it on our last last podcast. You know, the whole debate of creativity versus obsession and you know Mm -hmm. because in order for me to get where i'm at now um i i had to be a little bit obsessed with this stuff and to just Mm -hmm. want to learn they kind of go hand in hand yeah yeah and so you're a lot of bit obsessed yeah it's like where do you how do you how do you (laughs) how do you draw that line because i in the same at the same beat i also feel like having that whole like work-life balance is very important and I have, I, I'm not even close to, you know, mastering that sort of thing, but I feel like, you know, burnout is a real thing. And, and I just don't like how the community, not the community, but the, there's a certain s- portion of people that feel that like, you're not a real artist unless you don't sleep for a month on a project or something right. like that. You know what I mean? And, um, uh, I don't know. Like it adds some kind of legitimacy to, legitimacy to it. And I think it should be okay to like just work eight hours a day on your project. And it, it doesn't yeah. mean that you're less passionate about it. Well, if there's I something totally that agree. you have to do, that's understandable. But I don't th- like if it's nine or 10 o'clock at night and the only other thing you would be doing is watching Netflix, get back in front of the computer. Yeah. Like go or like spending time with your wife, get back in front of your computer. No, not that. Right. No. I, no. I will say that like <laughs> you like you said, and I was going to say this before you even brought it up, but like you have to have a supportive partner in this kind of industry. Cause it's like, yeah, I, I am always thinking like two to five years in the future about what I want to do. And there's so much to mm-hmm. do. And there's so much I want to do that. Like I need to just keep going, keep going because like, I got to get this done so I can get to the next thing. And it, it's borderline ADHD type of yeah. issue, but um, I'll get obsessed with something. It'll be, six o'clock and all of a sudden I wasn't planning on doing this, but now I'm spending five hours doing this new thing for some reason. And, mm-hmm. um, I guess the number of times that Dave has just been like, Oh yeah, I did this animation because I wanted to do it. And it's like, Oh, I didn't even know that was on our radar. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it comes up. Oh, this is priority now. And yeah. You know, um, yeah, that's, that's yes. You have that's to have an understanding that. partner <laughs> yeah. is, so is what I'm that. getting at. You, you have yeah. to have somebody. And like you said, it, it's fortunate that Julie and I both enjoy our alone time mm-hmm. or, or quiet time or just uh, doing things separate. And then we come back and we're fine. There's, there's no issue with that. And I'm always like, look, if I'm, if I need to be doing something right now, or uh, if, if you want to do something or whatever, like, let me know because otherwise 
I'm just going to be right here doing these things. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. uh, because, you know, a lot of times I'll be like, you know, I should go do something else and I'll get away from the computer and I'll go in the other room and I'm like, what the hell is that like? There's yeah. nothing to do. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. I guess I could put on the TV, but I can't go anywhere with COVID and I can't. Like, you know, it futz around the house, maybe install that smoke detector I should have put in like a year ago. <laughs> but I'll just be like, okay, well, it's 9 o'clock, and I don't really want to play video. I'm just going to sit back down. Man, y'all. I, I just have a need like, to create. Seriously, I have, you know, I, Dave, your whole life is about to change. I want you to know that. <laughs> I already have a kid. Your I, whole I know, life I is about to change. I know what it's like change. to have a kid. Two kids, man, is is it's it's too much. It, it, it's too much to be. No, sorry, I love my kids. I love my kids. Your kids, kids are closer much. together. Two Mine kids. are almost twelve years apart. So right, 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 right. Exactly. One kid is a whole lot easier to deal with than two kids. You know, and a toddler is also very hard. Then you throw a puppy into the mix, and it's like, oh boy. The thing is, like, yeah, I absolutely love this. You know. But I've got to have some decompression time. Like, I need two to three hours to decompress because the amount of stress that is on my life with the kids and the puppy and the camp MoGraph, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I will and say I've been like... doing some of that lately where, like, it gets overwhelming and all the to-do lists are there. And I will literally, like, unless there's an emergency, I'm going to shut off. I'm going to shut yeah. off right now and I'm yeah. going to zone out and take a break yep. before the storm. You know, which yeah. is what I'm going like, to do Saturday I'm... afternoon before the storm of camp. Right. You know? I'm yeah. hoping that I can get everything done today and tomorrow and then be able to have a, a, a fun Labor Day. You know, but there's yeah. also yeah. nothing wrong. Like, there's nothing wrong with enjoying it. No. There's nothing wrong with spending the time on it. I mean, look what it's done for you doing those late nights, right? Like, mm -hmm. now you can create some of the things that you want to create. You're out there doing NFTs and stuff. And you're going to be able to make some cool stuff for your films, and mm -hmm. that's that's helping you. That's, that's helping you. For, like, what does it hurt? Is is what I'm saying. Right. When it starts to hurt, I get it. But unless it's hurting yeah. something, well, it'll never hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, uh, I have a uh, like M Night M Night. <laughs> I have a love hate relationship with graphics, um, yeah. because you know when I met Paul, he did he had a laptop. And no credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah. True story. his car was, his muffler was being held on by a wire hanger. True. And I was like, how do you not have a credit card? Oh, my God. And Honda so, Civic with 250,000 miles. Uh, yeah. I, I bought him a Dell computer, a desktop, and that's what he started learning on. And, um, you know, we went through many years of not, I don't think we took a, an actual vacation, like a real vacation until well, eight years. Yeah into our relationship and because it was always like yeah but we could buy film equipment with this right yeah sure we could have this destination vacation i mean even our when we got married we just like went to the town got married uh and then had like this little party that was maybe 200 bucks that i also catered <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, because funny. everything was like how could we how could we put this towards uh film we don't even have wedding rings i was like i don't i could yeah i could have an engagement ring or we could have a better camera <laughs> that's true that's so you hold uh, up the camera. Oh, Here's my engagement that ring. Eventually, I I don't. That's even, her choice. I don't care. I don't even want one. We've been married for. That's why we're married. Twelve years. <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> this Ursa is my engagement ring. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Will exactly. you marry you wear me? Wear this on your hand. hand. Yeah. 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 That, that's it. I don't. I don't care. Right? Yeah. But I mean, I I sometimes want to strangle him, obviously, because a lot, everything with the house falls on me. For instance, we wouldn't have even known our crawl space was completely flooded if I wasn't like, hey, I can you take a bring that up. down there? Y'all are okay, <laughs> right? Like, y'all are flooding We a are, bit. but yeah. we probably got about six grand in damages that we're going to have to redo yeah. now, the whole vapor Ooh. barrier. So buy my NFTs. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Uh, so I do, you know, I, I get it, but uh, I also, I really admire the way that he works and, and also how your types learn because, uh, He's, what do you mean your types? I was going to say your types. Your, 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 your <laughs> no, types, funny. Your types yeah. are all autodidactic. You're, you're yeah. all autodidactic. And I find that fascinating because I'm so not. I'm like vintage and analog. That's how I work. And he can sit down and watch a tutorial and be like, right, mainframe, key two, F1, got it. And then he just makes, look, I've made a dinosaur. And I'm like, of course you did. <laughs> um, but 
if I try to teach him something that's more analog, he's like or, cooking. Like, immediately, he's like, "Where's the app for yeah. this? Right? How do you digitize it? Where? Do, yeah. What tutorial do I watch for this? Uh, how do I make this easier? And like, uh, how much RAM do I need? Yeah. <laughs> and then just send me on my way. But when he tries to teach me something, I'm like, "Why do I need a five thousand dollar license and three passwords to learn how?" To <laughs> yeah. On the computer, like, I just, you're not I, the yeah. only one asking. Yeah. yeah. I tell Julie to, to write down her recipes digitally onto, uh, you know, an app or in her notes on her phone or something, rather than writing them on a sheet of paper. Yeah. You know, because as soon as we start to, to cook, write them like in an NFT you just do a tutorial for me and I'll get it. There you go. Yeah. An <laughs> NFT cooking show. Like, I'm doing a tutorial <laughs> IRL right now. It's like, no, yeah. I need it on YouTube. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the that same with like everything write. has to be digital. Paper? What's that? I had to buy paper the other day. I'm like, yeah, and you bought still, the wrong I kind. Still, I bought the wrong <laughs> kind. I don't even use it. <laughs> A4, that sounds like paper. Right? That was the long paper. Oops. <laughs> Now I got a, and I, two giant reams of like long paper that I'm never going to use as Just well. Just cut it down. Just cut it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single Absolutely. one individually. Yeah. yeah. Get, you know, get scissors. A, a paper chopper yeah. and just, you know, fix that up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm a digital person. Um, I had okay. to look up what autodidactic was. <laughs> oh, I was actually going to say, uh, like, that's let me a Google big that. word. It just means a self-taught person. Yeah, it, but yeah. it's like it's to such an extent where it's it's not it's like being self-taught, but also having the patience and wherewithal to actually. I, I can't. Yeah. I'm a person. I need to have somebody next to me so I can ask the question and go. But what about this? Yeah, uh, that drives me nuts. Yeah. and and I notice like your types are just like we'll figure it out, mm -hmm, or yeah. he jumps into like you know, a forum. <laughs> Yeah. And there's going to be an answer, and somebody yeah. will answer it. We have to because yeah. we're constantly taking projects that we don't know how to do for the money, and then we have it's to learn our job. point there. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. every job. Every, you know, every it's, job. I, oh. it's funny. Like, I, I have always said that every, every new job is a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out how to put the pieces together in order to get the final picture. And sometimes you know? the puzzle is fun. And sometimes <laughs> it yes. sucks. Yes. Well, and it's like, like and the, uh... and it, it's it's and there's multiple ways to do the the same puzzle, you know. Yeah. And right. some of them will look exactly the same, and some of them will look completely different. And some of them know? will cost more money. Yes. Thousand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like um, when COVID hit, we weren't sure when we were going to be able to see other people again, and so mm -hmm. I was like, let's make an animation, and by that I mean you. And yeah. <laughs> Um, I was like, okay, if I give you an example, she's encouraging this behavior. I do, and uh. I'm like, can you, if I, can you build and make it look like? If you're you gonna ignore me. Like can you at least this? make something for exactly. me? Exactly. <laughs> and he's always like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then he gets to building that, and he's like, oh, because I'll just hear sighs from across the room. <laughs> and like, what's wrong? He's like, I don't just. Oh. I'll figure it out. <laughs> that <laughs> so, is me every um, day. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Julie's downstairs yeah, like, and. Are you all right? No, I'm just something else is broken. <laughs> yep. Constantly. It's always his I remember... computer shutting off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, back when off. we we uh, Dave and I worked together at the the first place we did, oh, it was yeah, funny. Yeah. Like all around the office, you just hear, "Fuck," yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. GD every other coming yeah. from different random. It's like surround yeah. sound. It's funny. And then the internet goes down, and you hear it come out of every office at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's funny. Yeah, so. I want to talk about the NFTs and stuff, but before we do that and before we get into the drop, we're going to do MoGraph Recommends. This is going to be super interesting today because... Okay. Haven't we done MoGraph Recommends, though? I feel like we've done MoGraph Recommends with y'all. They haven't well, been, on, I've never the been on the show before. You haven't been on our show? No, we were no, on their we show. Were we on your show? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what that was. It was the other way. All right. I forget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After 300 episodes. We know who loves who. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it's the problem. Cool. I'll get on these Skype calls or Discords and things, and I can't remember if we had a conversation on yeah, the air yeah. or where yeah. it was. Just, you know, they're all if right you, here at If the it desk. makes you feel better, like, sometimes I'll see a person and I'll be like, oh, we should have them on the show. And Dave says, we've already had them on the show. <laughs> they were on the show two <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like, we should get this, we should get someone on the show. Okay, what about this person? They were on a month and a half ago. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's just a blur. Yeah, like it's just, uh, I don't even know. I'm going to have to add it up. I added it up at show 200. I'm going to have to add it mm-hmm. up at 300 and see. I've got a spreadsheet because we yep. were at, we're almost at, or we'll, we're, we'll be at least at two months where you yeah. could play our shows back to back and they would keep going for two months. That's pretty ridiculous. So yeah. um, let's do MoGraph Recommends. And we are going to start. Uh, and as you've you've heard, because you listen to the show, this could be your all time or a recent favorite on any of these things. But we're gonna start with movie. Gosh, go it's got to be hard for y'all. I can't do that. I simply can't. Yeah. I shan't. Well, I have three. <laughs> I can't pick one, but I have three because there's fine. three films that, that that have like uh, that mark an important chapter in my life. One of them is A Few Good Men. Okay. One is Army of Darkness, and then Rumble mm-hmm. in the Bronx. Okay. So random. Yeah. Okay. okay. And they're not like my favorite movies or the best movies, but they're movies that mark an important important chapter in my life, like a change yeah. or something. I get that. Basketball is one of my favorite <laughs> movies of all time. <laughs> it's the stupidest movie, yeah. but there are times where I'm like, I just want to put that on. I have yeah. I have that entire freaking movie memorized. That like. <laughs> It's so dumb, but it's so funny. Yeah. What about you? you have yeah. Anything? Oh, my God. Like, when I tell you I've watched certain movies well over two or 300 times, I, could, I mean, it depends. Are we going, like, old school? It could be anything. Something recent, something Or it old. could be uh, old school. There was, no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> and my, boy my boy, Blue. My boy, Blue. You're, you're uh, crazy, I don't know, man. I mean, as a kid, I watched... Uh, Beetlejuice like a massive amount Ooh, of times that, that film was like really really big time for me um, Basketball Diaries was actually really yeah, an impactful film for me it was uh, I was like I'm like I'm old school Leonardo I'm back in like mm-hmm. early 90s Leonardo and he uh, he wasn't really very popular back then and I saw mm-hmm. that movie three times in, in the theater when it came out um, uh, uh, Django Unchained Hmm. That was a good one. That so good I, one. I guess I'd, I have. I, oh, and Leon the Professional. That was Leon. a big one for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was. I'm a huge Gary Oldman fan. So like Gary, uh, uh, Leon and Basketball Diaries were probably the most impactful for me in terms of wanting to make films. Mm-hmm. Have um, you seen uh, Cinema Paradiso? No. Y'all need to watch it. Okay. If if anybody I know needs to watch that movie, I, I would like to know your opinion of that movie because I it is still one of my all time favorites and none of nobody I know has seen that movie. Uh, Interesting. Put it on your list. It, it's I'm it's subtitles, it <laughs> but no, that, I like subtitles. We're we're fine with that. <laughs> yeah, so good. How do you feel about uh, David Lynch? You're more of a Lynch fan. Yeah, than... yeah. He's always he's got the he. I like the way he uses, um, you know, him and his cinematography tells cinematographer tells stories. Mm-hmm. I'm more Fincher so, than Lynch. Yeah. yeah. I'm very Finchy. I, I love Fincher. I yeah. love Fincher. Fincher's great. David Lynch, I I was always just like, what's 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 the appeal, right? And still, part of me is like, <laughs> I don't get appeal? it, but I love it for some reason. Yeah. You know, it's like we watched, uh, we watched, uh, what is it, uh, Twin Peaks. You know, mm-hmm. me and Amy watched Twin Peaks, and it was just the weirdest show we had ever seen in our entire lives. But it was like we were so excited when season three came out, and season mm-hmm. three was bonkers. And it's like so good. Yeah. I, I I just can't explain it. Yeah. Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. You like Twin Peaks, but not the not the restaurant. The no. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> I hate those. I hate those places so much. Yeah. I, that really gets to me. Hey, we're a booby restaurant, derp. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I just, it, I just don't like it. Derp. <laughs> I'm, I'm going there for the, for the wings. Yeah. Okay. Sure you are. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. The next thing on the list would be. Let's just skip over the music for a second let's go to tv show while we're on this kick i should really just Mm -hmm. clump those together from now on you should yeah tv show (laughs) no um for me let's see trying to think i mean scrubs is my all-time favorite tv show and that got me through some hard times yeah me too 
my MySpace yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> Through my MySpace um, days. Which will lead that will lead into my favorite podcast but that's probably if i had to pick one show if i was stuck on an island forever or whatever it'd probably be that one yeah all eight seasons uh not the ninth i'll deal with the eighth yeah all the eight ninth. seasons right yeah yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> all eight seasons sorry went right over there <laughs> uh, oh you yeah favorite tv show one oh. sure I don't. Uh, it doesn't I mean, have to be one. You can say name a couple I, if you want. I, I I have to I have to say I love Lucy. That was a massive show for me as a kid. Mm. It's why yeah. like the first time I saw Lucille Ball, I was just like, what? Like who does this? And yeah. that representation was kind of crazy. It was why <laughs> Aliens still one of my favorite movies. This was the first time I'd ever seen like a woman in a sci-fi that was yeah. kicking ass, and you know, the, so it was pretty cool. Um, I'm a big Will and Grace fan. That's a massive show for me. <laughs> Not the new one. Not the new one. I the haven't original. seen the new one. The originals. I love Lucy, and I, it would come on every night. You c- catch all the classics, and then you know mm-hmm. Perry Mason's after, and then it's time to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dick Van Dyke was always my favorite. I I loved Dick Van Dyke growing up. Like I thought that was just a wonderful, wonderful show. Yeah. You know, and the um, uh, WandaVision when WandaVision like. That's I, I I really fell in love with WandaVision in that first episode good. because yeah. it was so much like Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. And Kevin in the in the chat he says Scrubs <laughs> is pretty good, but Breaking yeah. Bad is the best show that he's ever seen, except maybe The Wire. Huh. Oh well, I mean like oh, okay. of 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 newer stuff. Yeah, I could go off. Breaking but just Bad. Like... We've I've watched Breaking Bad. That's a great show. The Wire. Mm. I never I haven't watched yeah, it yet. Sorry, Kevin. I know I it's one good, episode, and I, I can't and get like, past. I know. First one. I know you got. I was yeah, like that one, with but... Mad Men. I tried so hard to get into Mad Men, and I'm like, uh, same. Same. But once it. I once I finally got into Mad Men again, like it is mm-hmm. so good. So oh, good. Yeah. So, I haven't. I haven't. So I haven't revisited Mad Men. Yeah. yeah. Love the title sequence. The best. The <laughs> yes. best yeah. way yes. to get into Mad Men is not to start at the beginning, because that's what really? I tried to do, and it was slow, and I wasn't really getting it. Like when when Julie was already in the middle of watching it, and I got into it, I was like, oh, "Okay, now I, n- this is good. I'm going back. Okay, starting over. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Any others? Is that it? Oh, Ooh, let's um, see. I mean, I I don't care what anyone says. Shit's Creek love is Friends. really good. <laughs> that's a good new one. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, Shit's Creek was great. Friends. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we're getting into like stuff that's like cin- that we're really getting into cinematography, I'd have to say some of the best. Dark is probably shows... the best looking show ever. Yeah. Dark was great. Great show. Um, okay. But for me, I know this much was true. That's great. Was the best show that I could probably never watch again because it just emotionally was so intense. And my favorite sci fi sh- uh, show was Tales from the Loop. Yeah. yeah. That was a really good um, one. Oh, and Catch Twenty Two. That's a it's that's a show a on Hulu. That's I I I've yet to meet another person that's watched it. I want to talk to somebody about it. No one's ever seen it. <laughs> what is and it? it? Catch Twenty Two. Oh, we we made a mis- we made a mistake when we watched Tales from the Loop, and what happened was apparently we had tried to watch it like a year before, and we didn't. I don't know. It was like one of those things that was late at night and I uh, put this on and we both fell asleep. It ran through the whole thing <laughs> and it got to the end. Oh, and so when oh, we started no. it like for this first time, <laughs> second time really, it played the last episode and it's so off the wall anyway that we thought it was – we're like, what is going on? I don't understand. And we watched the last episode first by accident. Oh, I did yeah. that altered, with uh, altered motion that Game of Thrones. It's... Yeah, I did that with Game of Thrones. Alter motion, oh. so the Expanse. The, the Expanse, yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. You guys seen that? I haven't. Uh-uh. No, that's uh, really good. No. Uh, let's see, uh, music. Architects. Tool. Done. Right. That was that's easy. Done. Easy. Done. And done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. I mean, I I could keep going. Honestly, yeah, she's I mean, got a very eclectic. Paul uh, listens to the same kind of music. Yeah. He will not, like, vary from that at all. Give me the drums. Give me the heavy guitars. And screaming, and that's and it. Screaming. Ah. Um, uh. You're one but of those. I'm pretty much like uh, I love classical music. I love bluegrass. I love folk mm-hmm. music. I love metal. <laughs> it makes no sense. Have you heard the uh, bluegrass cover of uh, Metallica? Yes. It's uh, wow. uh, wait. Was what, it o- is older? It? Is there a new one? No, it was it was older. It was probably okay, like yeah. 
10, 15 years ago or something mm-hmm. like that. They also did a Shins album, which I thought was excellent. I didn't mm, hear that Shins, one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. just like, uh, I recently found a lullaby version of Tool and I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> it's like That's children's, funny, yeah. like a nursery, yeah. a nursery album for babies, but all Tool. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I used to play those on loop for for Emily when she was younger. All the nursery rhyme pop songs was awesome. Because at least it's not like super annoying nursery rhyme yes. songs. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. It's just like, you know little xylophones playing radiohead or something yeah. so uh podcast by baby tool rende- rendition <laughs> yeah ro- rock rock a by baby yeah uh. uh yes uh podcast mograph well, of course. <laughs> besides that though i am i'm actually not a big podcast person yeah when i do listen to him it's usually some something that has to do with true crime yeah, we listened <laughs> um, to that one when we went to the. I, I, I do like uh, My Brother, My Brother and Me. Yeah. Oh, yes. Love that one. So I saw good. them live. Just so did yeah. we. So did we. Yeah. yeah. It was a, such a great show. So um, great. For me, like, my podcasts have nothing to do with any, like, creativity or 3D anything. It's all <laughs> just funny stuff. Sean Hayes and Jason Bateman's. Yeah, the Smartless is a great one. The Scrubs, uh, Fake Doctors, Real Friends, the Scrub Rewatch podcast mm-hmm. is a great one. Um, those are the two I'm cur- currently obsessed with. You ever there's a few. Watch Monster Factory uh, with the two guys from My Brother, My Brother and Me. Uh, no. Oh my god. We watched that show they so had they funny. had for a while. I loved their show. That was yeah. so good. Yeah. The the yeah the show was really funny. Yeah, was I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I feel like it got it was just on the wrong network or yeah. The wrong yeah. thing. And then they should have just self produced it and yeah. then put it on YouTube or yep. whatever. Yeah. Totally. You know, like that. It was a shame. The but um, so. Mm-hmm. Oh. So as I said, we have like a, a hard out soon, so we have to. Um, yeah. Oh, how much time you got? I didn't know that. Eight Maybe minutes. Like eight minutes. Oh no. Okay, we better get <laughs> to the drop quick. Let's get to the drop. Oh right. my gosh, let's go to the drop. I knew that. The but... drop. 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 Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of The Drop, your weekly source for all things NFT and crypto art and upcoming drops by notable people in the MoGraph industry. I'm Matt Milstead. Joining me, as always, is Dave Koss. And joining us today is Sashia Dumont and Paul Robinson. We're going to talk real quick about NFTs, <laughs> which sucks that we're going to talk so quickly about NFTs because, Paul, uh, you've been you've been very successful in the NFT market uh, uh, lately. And, like... There's you're you, in my opinion, are one of those people who got into it when we all did, you know, mm-hmm. all of Good us story. did during the big rush. Yep. And you're one of the Late few February. people who have actually stayed in it, yeah. you know, yeah. who is and, and you've I, I feel like you've got, you know, you've become a, you, you've gotten a few sales and you've been become mm-hmm. successful doing it because you've stuck to it versus yeah. all of us. Yeah, it, it, it's it's uh, patience. It's all about mm-hmm. patience is and community building. Those are the two yeah. big things, you know, and people want to like, you know, it's 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 very important to um, for for your success as an NFT artist, in my opinion, to mm-hmm. gel with the community, you know, and not just make fake friends like just because if you love what you're doing, then you'd have a lot in common with all these people. And so you can you'll just like gel with them like I have people that are legitimately my friends that I've made in the past couple of months that I've never even seen half of them. I don't even know their real name, but we'll <laughs> yeah. just talk about stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you, you did a drop with, uh, Tori Bryant recently. Mm-hmm. Tori Bryant. Yeah. Um, are you, is the new one that you have on foundation right now? Uh, yeah, it drops tonight. It's minted now, but it, it drops tonight at, um, midnight. My time. Are we able Eastern to see time. it? Eastern. What is Yeah, what? it's on there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I sent you the link, but for the video Here, Dave, itself, I'm gonna put it. Did in, you um, grab the? Put it. In did the, you grab it? the links from the drop list? Uh, I did not. Okay, I so I'm not. gonna send you a couple of them, unless okay. you're able to grab them real quick. Uh, yeah, uh, I could probably grab them. I'll open Notion. And then uh, I just sent one in chat. Uh, Kevin hit me up, and he's got a drop. Oh, yes. nice. He, he yeah. is it a Breaking Bad drop or? <laughs> right. <laughs> No, he's he's got this uh, the the pineapple one, right? Mm-hmm. Let me bring this up here. There you go. Got this pineapple. This drops today, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Oh, this very nice. Yes. yes. 
the pineapple oh, one that's right nice. there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna keep going fast here. Yes, Friday, yeah. September third. And then uh, we got yours. Is that the one that you sent to me on Facebook yesterday? Because um, yeah, I didn't know if that was that a link directly to Foundation. I think it was just a video file because it wasn't minted at that point. What is going a... on? What is this Foundation? What is this? Thirteen hundred dollars for a picture of a truck with somebody underneath <gasps> with their head cut off in Photoshop. What is going on? Okay. Or, oh, yeah. Um. So let me go to you. Hey man, art is art. Okay. Art is art. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't understand. Okay. All right. Fine. I don't understand. Uh, There's one more in chat that I sent you. Okay. Cool. I'm looking for your piece here, real quick. So this is—is is this on foundation tonight? It is now. Yeah. It will. Oops. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So this is yours here. <laughs> Tell us about this one. So this is part of a, a, a collection that um, altered motion put together 12 artists we all got a um a sign zodiac sign that goes along with a birthstone that is going to uh correlate with colors and stuff so we all got the gemstone and then we are, our assignment was just to make something based on the the zodiac sign and so mine was virgo um who is the god goddess of wheat and um and uh, I, I wanted to kind of like keep it in my style, which is, you know, mechanical and robots and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. But I Love also I, I wanted to have some fun with it and kind of like, um, I don't know, just kind of play play around with some stuff that I that would fit into what what she, what it is, because it's yeah. one of the few signs that's an actual person. Usually the, the icon of it usually centers around a, a female mm -hmm. figure. And so I kind of wanted to kind of play with that a little bit. I love the movement on the wings. It's very pretty. Yeah. And you got other ones up here. Um, yeah, I did a so yeah. So and I did a, a collab with Tori Bryant and Sly Fly McCartney, and then I have three of my own as well, all sold out. Nice. Sold out. That's good. Nice. But it's, it's easy to be sold amazing, out if like... you don't put a lot of art out there. That's the secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, this is like how far you've come. Like we were talking about, this is how far you've come in in. You know, just going from like dabbling in 2D or 2.5D yeah. to doing full on 3D, which is uh, mm -hmm. pretty amazing. That uh, Plan B one, man, I love that one. Yeah. So good. That could have been yours for 0.6. But... <laughs> <laughs> Did you, have you bought any aliens? Yeah. Did you get on the, in, in on the, on the aliens? aliens? No. The visitors? The visitors. No, Our didn't. whole slack is blown up. I, with... don't, I don't buy many of the collections, I have a few. Um, you go, Dave. I sent you the link. Okay. I I didn't get in on the aliens though. I just bought Sly Guys. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those ones. I think no. I heard of it. But so these these are the aliens. Yeah, basically. the entire Slack started like buying them. They're officially sold out, and the floor right now on them is 0.1 ETH, which is great because nice. we bought them for 0.042 ETH. Oh, nice. That is yeah. Nice. And so, oh, and yeah. then uh, Sarah. Sarah Gibson had a drop, a uh, a a new drop. It is. Uh, uh, a, a shot of men, menkel, menkel. I don't drink. Was it men, <laughs> mensal? Yeah, I don't know. Mezcal. Men, menskal. Yeah. If you uh, look closely in the glass, you can see it's going along with her uh, her theme from the previous one. A shot of nips, nipski. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So cool. That was a fun one, I'm sure, for her to model. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't know about your heart out or Let's I would have gone a no, lot. No, it's all good. And then uh, the last thing that I want to mention is um, Nifty is n now opening up stuff to people. Like I heard about this, yeah. Yeah, so Nifty Gateway, um, their platform is opening up to external collections and new creators, which I, I feel like, you know, they were the the number one spot in the NFT space for the longest time, making the most money. And now that has significantly mm. gone down, you know, due to Super Rare and Maker's Place and uh, uh, Foundation the initial and initial explosion yuck, of NFTs. You know, yeah. 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 And so yeah. it's like uh, they're going to have to bring in, you know, because they can't keep can't keep bringing on the same artists every single time, you yeah. know, and expect to be making the same type of money. So it's interesting to see them opening up to uh, to new creators and stuff. Yeah, for sure. So well, we've got your heart out here, so we got to get out of the yep. drop. Yep. 
Uh, if you have any, uh, if anyone has any uh, NFTs are dropping, uh, hit us up info at mograph.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Oh, is, drop, 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 drop. is this the fucking oh, mic? This is exactly what I should be doing. I have to go back. No, I'll save Dorpy for next week. We just time. talked over the drop the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> the ending. So, <laughs> I'll save Dorpy for next week. That'll be good. Yeah, I'll, actually, I'll Dave will edit Dorpy in right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good uh yeah um let's see uh i uh have lost my spot in my notes but here we go um if you have uh do you have anything coming up you want to uh mm -hmm. talk about uh even though you have no time or you have not yeah you, uh, no. uh, we have a film we're finishing yeah, now there's a short film that we're we finishing did, we that did like a little micro short uh, actually based off of an nft yeah um, oh. uh, I, he was like, here's the idea, write a script. And I was like, okay. And I did it. And then we have, um, it won't be an NFT, but it's based no, off one. Yeah. It's based off one. And then we have the animation, uh, which hopefully will be done by the end of this year, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, I wrote that and he Short obviously did animation, all yeah. the animation for it. So hopefully well, that'll drop. Very busy. Dang <laughs> it. You know what? I just realized that my dorpy thing was based around the fact that we're going to camp. Oh. Oh, oh. All right. Man. Well, now you will insert it right yes. here. <laughs> do, do you have Do you have one minute that that you could spare to do this? All right. Yeah. Okay. We'll We'll hurry. You're I'm gonna just... have to cut out everyone. Yeah. I know. I'm just gonna go back to this. <laughs> right here. Here we go. That's funny. We'll just edit it all on the fly. Right. All right. Here we all go. Right, here we go. Hey. Oh, how's look, it going, Matt? It's Dorpy. Oh no, it's Hi. Dorpy. Oh no. Yeah, Matt. I'm all ready for camp. I got my right. COVID shot as well as a uh, COVID test just to be sure. Just waiting them to get back with me on the uh, lab reports. Ah, oh, lab, uh, lab. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, worth it, Dorothy. I'm it's looking so forward to camp and I'm looking forward to getting into my kennel and uh, jumping in the water so I can doggy paddle for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I there's yeah. going to be more to that. Yeah, no, I have that's a question it. for Dorpy. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite basketball player? Is it uh, Charles Barkley? Ah! <laughs> How long have you been hanging on to that? Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, I got to go. I got to run errands and I got to pack before I leave town. I got an appointment at the bank. Got to take care of things there with the uh, branch manager. Oh. <laughs> no. no. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> and come back to the end. And we're back at the end. There we go. I'll just cut it all, all right. in. I got nothing yep. else to do. I'll just edit. Um, right. All right. We, I know you got to get out of here. Sorry. Uh, you can rate us on iTunes, no leave a review, subscribe on your podcatcher of choice, newsletter. Say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the Paul Bab, Feel the Bab 2020 shirt, all the prophets in with that. The with the no Nocturne. MoGraph, no MoGraph T. With a or, what? What did I say? The MoGraph T. The MoGraph T. You said the, Paul Bab. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, all the things. I'm just trying to all hurry so we can get you out of here. Um, yeah. If people want to find you on the internets, where can they find you? Oh, man, everywhere. Uh, Send3productions.com is where you can find all of our work. Send3productions is a good hub for everything. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, I usually handle most of the Instagram. So, yeah. go, uh, go Gorilla, Gorilla Film. Go Gorilla Film. Uh, my stuff, she's got SashiaDumont.com for her stuff. I have Send3Paul for my stuff. And PaulRobinson.film is a lot of a lot of sites. Cool. Or you can go to MoGraph.com slash, <laughs> is it Go Gorilla? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Go Gorilla Film Cast. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. There you go. And we're not the only one there. Nope, you're not. That's you're right. Not. Uh, all right, so uh, we got to get out of here so you can do your thing. Uh, make sure that you uh, check your emails, everybody going to camp. Make sure mm -hmm. that you, um, if you have any questions or anything's going on, make sure you contact us. We'll try to, to help you out if you have any traveling situations or anything like that that we need to know about if you're uh, having issues uh, getting to camp or whatever. Uh, we will be here for you, and we can't wait to see you. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm just totally, totally psyched. Like, yep. I'm, I'm Next so Next time you hear camp. from us, we Can't will have wait. had a successful camp. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. We're going to get out of here. Uh, until next time, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. I'm Sashia Dumont. I'm Paul. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> Later, yo. Bye.